think it's game time. Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess. Drugs, guns, who just got me on? Let me shine a little light. Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess. Drugs, guns, who just got me on the run? Let me shine a little light. A group on the 50s, I love my whole city. Got the little ones with me, I ain't going back to prison. House for the yard, I get my own nun locks, I walk my own yard. Test one, two, one, two. Is everybody in? Is everybody motherfucking in? What's good? What's good? It's hump day. <laughs> hump day? Wait, is it Wednesday? Wednesday. Is it Wednesday or Thursday? It is Wednesday. It's it Wednesday. is hump day. I'm all fucked up, man. A hump later. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. That's an excuse now. It's a national thing. What do you mean? <laughs> Mark it on your calendar. <laughs> Reminder. Alert. Welcome to Hoodstocks, everybody. Appreciate everybody tapping in. I already see you guys. Lighting it up. Fried eggs, dirt. That's a homie right there. Gas monkey. That's a homie right there. Ricardo, Robert, Tony, tapping in from Stockton. I like that. I fuck with that. <laughs> but Sabuski, who's that? Uh, is that Flox? My boy Flox right here. My, my G's, man. Always tapping in. Always showing love. I love you, motherfuckers, man. <laughs> this shit ain't shit without you, motherfuckers. I mean, this is. I mean, this is the man cave right here. And low key, it's like a, a man, man cave. woman. <laughs> it's no, it's a man cave. Now think about it. We're gonna get into that right now. We're gonna talk <laughs> about like, that. The woman. Yeah. Cave. <laughs> yes. Yes. Tonight it is. Yes. Um. The, today's uh podcast is uh sponsored by. Uh, 50 racks www.50racks.com and we got these face masks and you can see it's got the fucking 50 racks right here this is actually my clothing brand right here once upon a time ago i had started this clothing brand and uh it was to support gentrification and the the thing was is uh 50, i was it was called 50 racks uh, the goal was to make 50k and give 50 percent to uh, displaced families due to gentrification you know being that i'm from highland park and I can no longer afford to live in my hood. Imagine that. But anyways, I was trying to do something for the displaced families getting kicked out. And it didn't go too well. You know, not too many people uh, followed uh, uh, with it. But it's okay because it's doing better now, you know. And so we have these face masks right here. Uh, badass face mask. You guys know the story. Yeah. I got this little paisita that lives down the street. Uh, and she's got a sewing machine in her living room. And she sews these masks up for me. They're yes. they're uh, double, they're uh, double uh, layered, uh, double pleasure, double. What was that? What was that commercial? Double myth, spearmint. Uh, she's a little too young I know, for I was that like, shit. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck you're talking about. <laughs> 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 I, got, I got a I got a hot key for that one, but anyways, <laughs> www.50rags.com. You know what I mean? Place your order. You know, and I I appreciate you guys. I, I've been saving up to get the camera, the new camera for the podcast, and I'm almost there. You know what I mean? Yes. Gotta, gotta sell a couple more masks. Um, moving on from that, uh, today we got a very special podcast. Uh, you know, and on this podcast, man, we travel down many roads. Uh, we've embarked on many abnormal human beings and sit in uh, many abnormal situations. But who the fuck am I to say what the fuck normal is, right? You know, the Flat part, looking, at, looking at this guy right here talking about normal, <laughs> like, fuck, man, everybody's got their own definition of, of normal. And my definition is far from fucking normal. Definitely. Yes. Uh, speaking from the heart, sharing happy and at times painful life stories is what this platform is all about. You ain't got to be famous. You just have to bend through some shit to be on this podcast. Go, Mic drop. <laughs> go get hit by a car and survive it. We'll put you on the... No, don't do that. Don't like, do that. Fall off a fucking 20-story building. Survive it. That. No, that. don't do that. But I'm just saying, you got to be through some shit, man. We don't want no motherfuckers, man, that are you no know, sensitive motherfuckers that ain't been through nothing, man. You know, uh, Hoodstocks is... Uh, all about them hood. You know what I mean? Hood motherfuckers are, you know, you just got to have layers of skin. Uh, thick ass skin. Thick ass skin. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> so um, I always write some shit. A lot of the shit I just said wasn't what I wrote. <laughs> but it's all good, though, because that's just telling you guys that we're going to have a good podcast tonight, man. Hey, look at everybody tapping in. I love yes. you. I love you, motherfucker. You know what's funny is I'm blind. I have my glasses on, but I can't fucking read that. Is that right? Because well, I'm blind as fuck. And I'm like, how can I not read that? I hate have... you. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on a second. You don't want to read that. I know. I was like, I can't. <laughs> it's a lot of hate mail. I don't think they like you. No, I'm just wait. <laughs> I know. I was like, no, it's what? Of, it's, a, it's a lot of love. It's a lot of love this show right now. Um, <laughs> 
Second, second. <laughs> I said that shit stupid as fuck, you know. <laughs> second female in Hoodstock's history to bless this platform. I want you all to give it up for Elvira Laguna. <laughs> yes. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. I didn't prepare a speech, but <laughs> it's all good. But <laughs> hey, um, thank you for coming through. On a Wednesday, I know you just came from downtown LA. Yeah. You, you hit all that traffic. We don't need to exactly say where we're at right now. I, know. I was like, oh. <laughs> but um, you know, it's a lot of traffic. Whichever way you're going from downtown LA, and um, just thank you for uh, coming on. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for blessing me to come on your show. Hey, sometimes I'm like Jesus. <laughs> Seriously. Blessing. Just no. blessing everybody with the goods. No, I'm just playing. I mean, <laughs> I just like, unfortunately, um, you know, you, you've been through some shit. Like I was saying in the beginning, you, mm -hmm. have an, you have an interesting story. We have gone back and forth about having you on the platform for, I would say, a month. Somewhere. A month, yeah. Months. More than a month. Yeah, it's, it's been be months. Oh, yeah, you are right. It has been. It, it's been months, you know, and I'm just happy to finally uh, have you here. You know, I just, I, I, I don't know. Mostly like I said, man cave, cause it's most, mostly dudes that yeah. come on here, you know? And uh, the other uh, person we had on was um, LA on cloud nine, Claudia, you know, Claudia. I don't. What it, yeah. What so she it? feeds the homeless in downtown LA, like, oh, that's dope. like that's ritually, dope. like every day. Yeah. She clothes them. She gives them tents. Fuck. She feeds them. Like she, like she been through like some crazy shit in life. And this is like this fuels her soul. And this is what she does. And she's also a social worker. Wow, that's that's interesting, actually. Yeah. Like, what specific social worker is she? I don't know. Are you not sure? Um, just she. I, I guess it's in just a social worker in regards to like homeless people. Oh, okay. So like, um, like Lassa. I'm not, shit. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's good so people. Hard. And so we, here we are, we have you. Well, we've actually had another female, but she, uh, she, she's got, she got a, she got a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she got a dick. <laughs> she got a dick. Well, she's growing a dick. Wow. Yeah. She's a, uh, she's actually, a, um, my homeboy's sister has been in transition of becoming a man. You know, my best friend is transgender. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And these dudes loved her right here on the podcast, man. Yeah. I had I had half these dudes trying to get her number. You know what's fucking crazy? I'm just is... fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't doubt that because you know what's crazy is I think it's so interesting how you see transgender women now. And I'm like, you look like a whole ass bitch. Like, I'm at, just think about it. Like, I don't know if you've seen Nikita Dragon, but like, no. I would have never thought that she was a fucking dude. So imagine if you're like in the fucking club, right? Yeah. And you see this bomb ass bitch, fat ass, nice tits. And a boner. And then you go back to the, you know, room and she got a dick. Like, are those, like, what do you do? I'm going to tie that dick on a knot and beat that bitch's ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like shit is so confusing nowadays. Like, it's crazy. You ever see them dudes with the balloons and make poodles and shit? Out? <laughs> yeah. Like pop. Oh, that's fucking good. I ain't touching that motherfucker, but I'm beating that motherfucker's <laughs> ass. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go for the one hitter, like the one hitter. Yeah, just like nighty night, little <laughs> motherfucker. Like, <you laughs> little really motherfucker with a pussy dick, tits, and ass. Like it's out, lights out. Like, oh man, that'd be. Yeah, I mean, crazy. this and I and you know what? Check it out. Like, so I had a transgender on here. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones that scare me. Why? Because they can fucking possibly, there can possibly be a dick underneath that miniskirt. Yeah, that's true. That's that's fucking scary. So I, they have a responsibility to be like, you know, to whisper in your ear, "Hey, big dog, I'm not really a female." <laughs> what would you do? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like for a minute, she's like, oh, oh. and then all of a sudden, she's like, "Just be real with you, dog." <laughs> you know, I need like, to hear that. Like, whoa, <laughs> the fuck. Like, I'm not that fucking the fuck they put in my jack? <laughs> Just Bill Cosby me. Yeah, like, what the fuck? No, that shit's crazy. Hey, big dog, I know you got a hand <laughs> on my tits right now, but I, there's also a dick down, down there. Down there. <laughs> fuck that. 
Yeah, but anyways, uh, hey, shout out to fucking Shooter. I see Shooter right there. Jennifer Jackson, my co-host. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day to you. Hey, Annabella in the house. I see you, Annabella. Andrew. Okay. Yeah, Lucky. Did you get Lucky after interview <laughs> with the transgender? Nah. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm like squinting. I just can't fucking see and I'm trying to read and I can't read because I'm fucking blind even though I have my glasses on. So don't fucking come for me. Lucky passed out during interview. I don't know what that means. Oh, Lucky passed out through interview. That was uh, that was one podcast. Oh, oh, somebody oh, passed out. Lucky he passed, passed out? out during interview. <laughs> he passed out. Hold up. No, I got fucked up on one interview. <laughs> I need the I need the background to this. George Perez, man. They they put. Some, <laughs> I, dude, I went to go. Do, I don't want to use the restroom, and I swear to God, this dude put something in my drink because I came back. Out. And I, I don't remember ending the podcast, but I do remember finishing a bottle of tequila. If that makes any sense Ooh. to you. But tequila's always a good time, though. I'm a Jack dude. I'm a whiskey <laughs> dude. So I, 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 either he put something in my drink, George Perez, the comedian. I don't know if you ever heard of that dude. He's a funny dude. I actually watched a couple of his videos. Because yeah. Of, uh, because you shared it. But he's he's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I went to the use the restroom. I came back and I just remember having a couple of drinks and then bye bye. See you later, little That's motherfucker. Fucking yeah. Roofied you. Yeah. Possibly, possibly. <laughs> Hands up for the blind motherfuckers in here. <laughs> That's right. But hey, so we're going off on all kinds of other shit. I know. You know, um, I can fucking talk. I'm a fucking talker. Yeah. Yeah. The more alcohol in me, the more crazy it gets. So. Oh shit. We'll keep it to a two drink minimum today. Two drink minimum. All right. <laughs> I mean, you do what you do and shit. You know, I got a sofa out there if you need to fucking crash. <laughs> you know, I don't want Go you to, to work in the morning. Why are you wearing the same thing as yesterday? It was a long day. Don't fucking tell me nothing. It was a long one. Yeah. So so you are what 26 years old? Yeah, I just Tw turned 26. So happy birthday. When was your Thank birthday? You. It was April. It was April. Yeah, it was just, I mean, did you have one of those uh quarantine birthdays? I did. You know what? Um how inappropriate can I get on here? You can you can get rated fucking X on this okay. bitch. I don't give a fuck. So for my birthday, it's actually crazy because I was super depressed because I'm a super Aries baby. Aries gang and, out here. And are they depressed? Babies? No, we're not. We're okay. not. We're crazy as fuck. Okay, because you, you started <laughs> off with I'm a super I depressed know, no, Aries was, baby. <laughs> no, I was super depressed because of quarantine. Because okay. originally I had planned to do like some crazy ass shit for my birthday. Like I was trying to be titties out, fucking on a boat somewhere. Like okay, that was like my my goal was to get blackout drunk, which didn't. I mean, it happened, but it was like blackout drunk to get my mouth type shit, which was cool. I was so happy for that. So wait, wait, you said you said <laughs> blackout drunk, dick in my mouth type yeah, of shit. Like that was my birthday. Okay. And prior to that, I because I'm like messing with this dude right now. So for me right now, I'm just like so focused into my career that is I'm he watching like, right now? He might be. I told him that I'm on. He might be on here. So we're gonna make him feel a little special. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I'm just like, you know, messing with this dude. I'm not like trying to be in a relationship, but um, it was cool. Like he bought me cheesecake, fucking got me flowers and balloon, which I didn't expect. Cause when you're just doing like friends with benefits type shit, yeah. it's like, dick, I just fuck you. Like, I don't need to text you unless yeah. I want to fuck type shit. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So it was, I had a bomb ass birthday, like shockingly, even though I was in my house. So, so he showed up with cheesecake balloons and flowers. Yeah. I was, and, I was fucking shook. Yeah, you were shook. You were just like, wow, I'm not used to this type of treatment. I'm just used to fucking, you know. Getting fucked and leaving. Yeah. Hey, I'm, <laughs> like, I, I, appreci I, I like, appreciate wow. the honesty. And I'm sure so everyone else does. You guys appreciate that honesty right there? Go yeah. ahead and just give her a shout out for the honesty right there. Because this is a hood stocks. You know? I mean, I don't want no P PGG shit around this me? shit. You know what I mean? I, lo I love you. Know what I mean, yeah. Um. So so, so how, how did your birthday? He showed up and yeah. you guys ate cheesecake and had sex. Pretty much. Yeah. And you know what's more what's I was more sad because I because I had just I just started a new job. So I my birthday landed on a Friday. OK, so I had to fucking work on my birthday. That sucks. So I was already like in a bad mood. So I was like, fuck it. Like it's fucking quarantine. I'm depressed. I'm going to fucking work fucking nine hours. I'm just going to fucking go to sleep. Yeah. But then I was like bamboozled. Yeah, he showed up. It was up. like a little steak and salmon. Yeah. Mashed potatoes, asparagus. Hold the fuck up. Wow. You trying to wife me? I mean, yeah, no real shit. I mean, <laughs> like, are you are you open for it to be wifed? No, you know what? Speaking of at twenty six years old in this in this new generation, I mean, how many how many dating apps are you on right now? Yeah, 
be honest. Uh, why you why you gonna throw me out there like that? <laughs> because that's the new shit. I mean, you if know? I was if I was single, Fuck. I would be fucking. I would I would be shiny and baby oil, and I just have the. <laughs> I'd have that picture just like lame. Like, what's up? With a teddy bear. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know no. what's it's funny to me? Actually, I'm I used to be like on Tinder, POF, fucking Coffee Meets Bagel, every fucking dating app you could fucking think of. But you know what's funny to me is that guys always complain about how you can never find a girl that was wants to fuck and like everybody catches feelings. But it's the same thing for girls. I've been in situations with dudes where I'm like, I just want, like when I hit you up, I'm trying to suck your dick and I'm trying to fuck. That's it. Like, I don't want you fucking texting me how my day is. I don't want you fucking te- just don't text me unless it's about that because I'm so in my bag that obviously we all have needs yeah. that like I want consistent dick without a relationship and me to focus on my own shit. And that still has an issue. It's like, I don't know. I give you one task, which is to fuck me. And you can't even do that consistently. So what if, what if a dude comes through and you know, he he meets your request, mm-hmm. you know, and um, and he's like a fucking two minute man. I mean, no, it's not gonna work. It's not a, a, uh, no. it's a problem. So what <laughs> what is what is what is what is, the, what is the least amount of time? I mean, do you get you cut a dude a break at all? It's the first time, you know. What I mean, he might bust quick, you know. What I mean, I mean, how does how do females minds work when it comes to guys like that? You know, I've only messed with one dude that like came really fast. I've never talked to him again. That was a one. You get you hit the eject button on him. Yeah, we don't do through structure out, buddy. You got Please. one time. You got one time to fucking and make it. And if you make fucking it. fail, it's a wrap. How many two minute men are on this right now? I think there's a bunch of them, man. <laughs> Where are they at? Two minute men. There's got to be some two minute men right here. There has to be. There's probably a ton of two minute men right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> we fuck like rabbits. What's up, Luis? Hey, she. Hey, she. Luis, what's up? Hit hey. my line after this. I'll fucking send you my digits. I like that. Energize a bunny all night. What's up? Bunny rabbits. <laughs> that bunny rabbit action. <laughs> oh, Crystal, what's up? Andrew said he's the two-hour man. Damn, that's it. Two hours. That's it. That's wow. <laughs> Your face was like. Whoa, I'm a little stressed. I mean, I'm I'm, the, I'm on this fucking married life and shit. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it can, sometimes it's uh, it can go the distance, and sometimes it's just like she looks at me like, "Motherfucker, you ain't shit." I don't even know why I'm still with your ass. <laughs> you know what I mean, and I'm like, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> I agree, <laughs> I ain't shit, but I feel good. You know what? I was. It's funny because me and my girl were just having this conversation and shit, and um, we did we did something recently and shit, and I was like, "All right, babe. Well, my 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 fucking uh my my uh my soul just left my body right now." <laughs> I mean, like you know, when a dude when a dude busts a nut, it's like everything that was happening before that is out the window. Yeah, is that the same with females? No. So the thing is, is I think with us, like, because I can come. And I'm ready. Like, let's go again. Let's go again. Let's yeah. go again. Let's go again. I feel like we just have that. I mean, it, but then it depends. Cause then it's like you have like the category of like dudes who like fuck good and you can go around, but then you have the dudes that like work your shit and you're yeah. like they murder you out. Bro, I gotta I gotta pin you to the wall. I gotta breathe a little bit because yeah. my body's still shaking. Yeah. So you gotta time give out. me a minute. Yeah, time out. Bro. But you know what? Those dudes are very rare. It's not about I feel like people should get more in their comfort zone. I feel like people just think that like exploring your body and like trying new things is like some gay shit. And it's like, oh, so you're, no. trying, to, you're trying to stick a ting, t- ting, a tongue in a motherfucker's ass. Yeah, I ate ass. You eat ass, dude's yeah, asses? with one dude. I hope he's not watching right now. <laughs> but with one dude, I've even stuck my, a little finger in there. And like, do you know how like did one finger lead to a fist? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Because that's a problem, then. You know, you're like, but, Whoa. You, but you know how like how much you turn on a girl by letting you be like that vulnerable is like fuck that shit is like that's attractive, and people are like, no, it's fucking gay. Like, fuck you, you fucking pussy. Like, be a man. Let me put my fucking finger in your booty hole. <laughs> Like how many men are out there that like a finger in their ass? <laughs> I need to know. <laughs> she needs to know right now. <laughs> if you like a finger in your ass, uh, uh, DM me and I will forward you. No, don't DM me. I'll be like, like I'll be like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> no, I was gonna say I'll forward you to her, but put put your Instagram out there real quick. Put your it's, Instagram out there. It's L V E E L L V V I I E E E. 
Is it, is, uh, you had a question real quick. Andrew Martinez wants to know, is it true black dudes don't like to eat pussy? You know what? Who do you fuck with? Do you fuck with black okay, dudes? Fuck. I mean, is there a color thing no, with you? So, because, because. Fuck, well, I, let's, hate, let's, I let's, hate this subject. Let's talk about I your nationality. What's your nationality? So I'm fucking mixed as fuck. I'm a mutt. So uh, my mom is um, Native American Indian and my and Native American Indian and Mexican. Okay. My dad's Puerto Rican and black. So I hate when we talk about the race shit because <sighs> who fucks better, blacks or Mexicans? And you're I, I and only fuck with Mexican dudes. You only fuck with Mexican dudes? I've only I've only fucked one black guy and I've only dated one black guy in my life. And I hate to sound racist because I'm not, but there's something about black dudes that they're just different. And you know what? Maybe it's the whole I I I I fuck with hood dudes. Okay. I've always fucked with hood dudes. So it's like for me, I feel like black hood dudes are just not as cleanly and upkept to, for a nice word as Mexican dudes. Okay. I mean Mexican dudes are uh I mean so You know what I mean? So so this is this is what I know and this is what I know from prison, okay? Mm -hmm. I know this. Um black dudes don't shower every day. And that that's a problem for me. So that's that's but that's what I know. That's and that's not all black dudes, but I feel like that's a big percentage of black dudes. And shout out to my brothers that are on this podcast. And I, I absolutely mean no disrespect because I have brothers that fuck with me right here. You know yeah. what I mean? And a, a lot of these dudes are Mexican though. Um, but um, Mexicans though they they I mean they sh they shower like I mean if you're gonna take time to crease your clothes up and fucking iron your shit up and whoop the whoop whoop and all this shit I mean motherfuckers are smelling like a bar of soap and shit you know like yeah. dudes dudes are, are very cleansy in in the prison system um, like bro like you gotta take a shower like the, with the homies like bro you if you that homie that ain't taking a shower bro you gonna get your ass beat. Yeah. Well, shit like that well, but with the brothers they run a little bit of uh, a, a looser program they're a little harder to tame within uh, their their circle which i see because there's so many uh just different cliques of the black dudes yeah you know in regards to like fool you ain't telling me shit type of shit and you know uh kudos to them on on that note you know what i yeah. mean but you know because i can respect that to a certain limit but we have a little more structure and you got to wash your ass and all that shit you got to clean your shit up you got to <laughs> make your fucking bed up homie you yeah. got to fucking you don't don't come to the fucking uh, morning chow hall with motherfucking dragon breath because you know what I mean you might get your ass beat over that shit you yeah. know but but that's so you so so you as a uh 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 Af what do they call it afro latina afro latina and i love that i love too. that term i no, honestly <laughs> i love the afro latina term and i love that you're on this podcast freely talking about this right here because this is a dope fucking subject you know what i mean and we need to have you on more often on we that should, note we should, get, we should do we should do a lucky happy hour yeah i'm down with that i'm down with that because, but i'm just gonna fair warning i get a little off the rails when i get drunk so if i say some racist shit i'm not being racist I just be my mind sometimes and I'm not very coherent when I'm under the influence and I just say shit. So please don't be offended by it. Again, you have to have thick fucking skin. Yeah. Honey. Don't get offended. <laughs> I mean, dudes get offended right here, but I think uh, as qu quick as we get offended, we get over the shit. I mean, me personally, um, it doesn't take too much to uh, like offend me because I live in a glass house, you know? Yeah. I, I, I just like, I clown myself on shit. I mean, it's all good. But back to what we were talking about. So you fuck, you like to fuck with Mexican dudes uh, more. And so that's, I mean, that's dope, you know? Yeah, no, I do. Like that shit is just like, especially like a hood dude. Like. What if you got a little ass dick though? No, I don't fuck with little dicks. Well, scratch that. I have fuck with a dude that had a little dick, but he know how to eat pussy like no tomorrow. I'm, I'm, so it's kind of like a compromise. Sometimes I'm like, you got to compromise a little bit. Yeah. One time I was, I, I got this homie, uh, um, he's, he's passed away. The homie sporty and shit. He's from rest another hood. Peace. Yeah. Rest in peace. Uh, he's from another hood, but it, we were in the pen one time and he was telling me about, he was like, we, you know, we tell war stories. We tell stories about females and shit like that. And one time we were in the gym in Susanville three yard and he was telling me how he used to, he was fucking the shit out this broad, right? He goes, fool, I had her and I was fucking long stroking it and whoop de whoop whoop and bop, bop, bop. And he put all kinds of sauce on this shit, right? And so anyways, we get, we, we come back from yard and we're in the gym shower, which is an open shower. You know what I mean? With multiple showers that we're just in there. It's like a locker room. Right. Yeah. You know? And it was funny. Cause I looked over, I looked over at him and this fool just had balls and a big bush. You know what I mean? And I said, I said, bro, <laughs> Where your dick at? 
<laughs> I said, homie, what the fuck? I said, you were doing what to that bitch? Wait, but let me let me pause you, though, because I've also fucked dudes that have little dicks that can fuck me better than a dude with a big dick. So don't fucking. He knows how to work that little yeah, ass Jolly Rancher. D- yeah, like don't fucking. I mean, is this it when? So if a dude's got a little dick, I mean, is it is it, obviously it's not the strokes, it's the wiggle. Yes, he's like, just like, he's just wiggling it in there, bro, bro. <laughs> if you know how to wiggle your Vienna sausage, you'll be good in life. Period. So sometimes, so his wiggle game was strong. Yeah. So sometimes you can have a big dick and not know what the fuck to do with it, and it's like, dog, you're hurting me. Stop. Like. You're just poking the shit out of me. It doesn't feel good. I'm not wet enough. Have Relax. You ever, have you ever heard of a female with a tilted uh, uh, uterus? No. Okay, yeah. You know what I did find out is African-American women have circle uteruses. So, you know how when you are when you have a baby and the head is supposed to be like upside down? Yeah. So, a fucking African-American woman can give birth with the baby's head tilted, upside down, sideways... It doesn't matter because the bone structure is circle instead of round. That's why white and like Hispanic women have more C-sections because their uterus will not support it. Wow. I know. Crazy, huh? That's crazy. That's a, that's a good fact. So if you're an African-American woman and they tell you how to get a fucking C-section, you're like, nah, bitch, I don't have to because I got a fucking power uterus. So let uh, the baby come out. Yeah. Real shit. And you know what? I got some, <laughs> I got some homies that like... that. <laughs> Uh, how can what? I say, say this? It. Fuck, how say can it. I say this without putting them on blast? Just say it. So I got some. I got some people that I know that I grew up with. Okay. And um, I know they. You know, what I mean, like dudes. Like dudes are stupid. Like dudes will pull their fucking dick out and piss in front of each other. Like you know, whatever, whatever. Or sometimes muffle will be like fucking talking shit, and muffle will pull out their fucking dick and do some stupid shit. I mean, I've been around some animals, dude. Yeah. And it's no, it's no gay shit. It's just dudes are just crazy dudes. and fucking stupid as fuck. You know what I mean? Like locker room football player dudes and you know gang member type of dudes. Like muffle's just clown and shit. But anyways, um. I, but I, I've, I've, I've noticed, no, no none of that. I've, I've, <laughs> I've never been in not one sword fight. But I, I've noticed though that the dudes with the, with the little uh, with the with the little killers uh, underneath their uh, uh, belt, um, they always talking about eating pussy, you know. So yeah. they they know that. All right, check it out. My shit is um, not the best. Not very impressive, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, my, I'm, it's all going to be all about the wiggle action. But I noticed a lot of these dudes talk about eating. Pussy. Yeah, because if you have a little dick, you have to improvise. Because I will be damned if I'm fucking a little dick nigga and he doesn't know how to eat my shit to fucking Tumbuk to too. Yeah. Like you better be eating my shit all fucking night and making me come fucking five times if you got a little dick and you don't know how to fuck. So when you're <laughs> eating, so say with a so to give a dude a pointer right here and shit, and say if he's uh eating pussy and shit, what is the best uh way to eat? pussy like do you have to go for the clitoris do you have to have don't a finger? attack the clitoris don't attack the clitoris. don't attack the clitoris i hate that shit like i youtubed it one time and it said no. that you got to do a, a circular eight mo- a circular eights with your tongue yes. on the clitoris yes yes okay so that like, is that is true then. yes i hate when I, i'm just going down on me and you're attacking my clitoris it does not feel good it feels like you know when you're you know when you're taking a shit <laughs> um this is the real pips this is real tips so fucking get your phone out and write this shit down or fucking memorize it you know when you're taking a shit and like a like a gnarly ass shit yeah. like you fucking ate some hot cheetos all fucking night and you're like your shit ass is, burning. is about to blow yeah. okay and you know you're sitting there for a long time and your fucking feet getting numb yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and then when you're walking away and and it's like tingling and yeah. it's like a sharp ass pain that's what the fuck it feels like huh it doesn't feel good. So, so, there, <laughs> there, so there has to be breaks uh, in between licking the titteris. So, uh, the clitoris, the um, titteris, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the titteris. <laughs> I just made up a word. I mean, uh, but I'm just saying though. So, 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 so the circular eights, you know. So, but the, to to make a female come um, eating the pussy, you have to, um, you have to like it's it's about the clitoris, right? Not necessarily. That's the thing. Do you but have then, to have a finger in there at the same time? But or? then I guess it, it also depends. Every woman is different, though. So there's some girls that I've met, like homegirls that are like, I don't fucking like my pussy be, being eaten. Like, I don't like I don't care for it. And for me, I'm like, I love to get my pussy ate. Like, I would rather get my pussy ate than fuck. Like, you could just eat my pussy and not fuck me and I'll be fucking content. 
So it also depends on like you knowing your partner. Yeah. Because some girls will be like, just lick my fucking clit. And other girls will be like, don't fucking attack my clit. So it's it's a weird thing because it's like it's no platform of like this is the go to for everyone. 100 percent. So I agree with you on that. You know, what I mean, so so check it out. This is a conversation that I have with my girl. No, check yeah. it out. I said, I said, babe, tell me what makes you feel good. Tell me how to do it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a master fucking sex dude, you know, yeah. like. I'm used to like back in the day, I was fucking hood rats and shit. And I mean, you don't make you just love get your to nut a, and you leave. Yeah, you don't make love to a hood rat. <laughs> yeah. you, know I mean? you don't make love to, you know, to a brother. Like, you know, damn well, nut. everybody else is fucking her. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're just like going in for the kill shot, right? Yeah, that does. You know, so, so, but when you're in a relationship though, it's different. You have when, a you're in a, when you're in a long standing relationship, it's like a, a female has a responsibility. I feel like this. If she's, if she, if you're busting, she's not busting then it's she has to take some type of responsibility to say, hey, check it out. She can't be mad about it. She's got to, if she's not yeah. telling you what to do right. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm she's got to take a responsibility bro, for that. Ass, I'm very vocal. I'm like, I don't fucking like that. Put your fucking tongue lower. Like, I'm very vocal. Like, I, because I'm going to, like, it's different. <laughs> Yelling Wait, at the dude voice down there. Let's, let's, let's really back. If I'm in a relationship <laughs> with you, it's a little different because I'm very, like, empathetic and sensitive and want to be the nice person but if i'm just fucking for my nut you will see the tasmanian devil bitch we didn't come to play we came to get the job done and if you can't do it let me know so i can fucking him out of the line like period that's just how it goes <laughs> give a round of applause for that one i ain't mad at that at all you know so it's it, it's hard because sometimes hey i just i keep on going right here because there's a lot so what, what youtube does is they block out a lot of these comments. Uh -huh. And I so I have to go back on my computer right here and I have to uh, um, okay the comments. Yo, is there 78 people in here? Yeah, there's 77 people right Yo, now watching Yo, what's this. good? Yeah, they're watching you talk. Um, that is dope. What, 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 did, what did little Mark say? Little Mark just said, what did, where's Mark? Mark said, I lick my girl from the back of her neck to her forehead. So all the way around? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, what is Shooter saying? Shooter saying me and my wife are high as fuck cracking <laughs> up to this shit. <laughs> but it's true. And these are things that people don't want to talk about. Because, like, you watch porn, right? And you're like, damn. I watch porn all the time. And sometimes I feel like, so So uh, recently I was in the bathroom and I was supposedly taking a shit. But I was really jacking <laughs> off, you know? And, Why? And you I have a wife. I, I do have a wife. No, just check it out. So you I'm can't like, jack no. off if you have a wife? No, you have a Unlimited pussy right there. What I, do you mean? Yo, if I was married, my husband's dick probably would fall off because I would just, I don't give a fuck. Come the fuck out. You gave me vows. I'm horny. I'm going to fuck you. You don't have a choice. I'm not fucking jacking off. But check it out. But when you've been in a relationship for years and I'm not trying to like, so check it out. I'm fucking the, uh, <laughs> the AKA jackhammer hands right here. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I fucking, um, I, I feel like, I mean, in prison, you jack off. You know, and so it's just, I mean, natural. I mean, it's just something that I, certain, certain dudes do sometimes. They jack off. Like, yeah, you have unlimited pussy right here. Like, I know I got this beautiful girl right here. I can, I can fuck her in any which fucking hole. I can get a blowjob right now. But you know what? I'm going to jack off to Why? this corner right now. I mean, I don't know. Is it like the spicing it up of like, is it more so you seeing something different? Versus like the same thing over and over again, or is it about the nut? I would, and I'm I just would say like, I would say it's seen something different, you know. And that's facts. I, I would, respect that. I would say it's seen something different, and um, I mean sometimes I I I I, I fucking I'll, I'll type in um, stepmom. <laughs> Fucking your son, <laughs> <laughs> you know some weird shit, you know, and the the There's fucking some crazy ass shit. Or sometimes I'll type in um horny secretary, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't know. Get what? yourself in trouble. <laughs> it's not getting in trouble. I mean, I hope not. I mean, it's it's not real. It's all fantasy. It's, it's like it's, just, it's like playing a video game, right? It, I would say so. I mean, I'm not touching. I'm not, you know. I'm just looking, I mean, is babe. That, is, relax. That, is that considered? Is that considered like cheating? No, I mean, I think, but I think so. You would be, but would you, but you, would you be mad at your dude that does that? No, because I wouldn't know because he wouldn't tell me. Hey, babe, I'm gonna fucking jack off right here on the this fucking dirty secretary sucks my cock. 
No, he's not going to say that. I wouldn't even know. So why would I be mad? Honestly, Think about I, that. Honestly, I don't even know how we're going to go. I don't know even know how we're going to transition to your story from this <laughs> shit right here. Real <laughs> shit. We, I, I, we might not even get to your story. I know. I'm like, fuck. What the fuck? Hey. <laughs> you know, I like talking about sex. I'm not going to. I So I think that's what it is. Like, uh, would you I should be a, a sex coach. A sex coach. Yeah, for sure. Um, What, what would you say that uh, a dude... um. That a dude uh, pre ejaculates too early. Like, what would uh, if you were a sex coach? What would you say? I haven't ever experienced that, but I also fuck with dudes that are way older than me. Way older than you? Yeah. yeah. Like, like fucking sixty years old. Like forty five, forty six. Forty six is nuts. Are hanging out those kneecaps? Nah, I've, I've fucked some pretty active men. Yeah. Like I'm fucking like yo, I'm trying to go to sleep, and they're like, nah, bitch, roll the fuck over. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right daddy let's do it <laughs> you know it's like at that point it's like bitch i'm just gonna lay here and fuck me because I'm, I'm exhausted because i'm 26 and i'm fucking a dude that's 46 that's the whole like that's a big age gap so you've been having sex longer than me so i'm tired you are like rocking my world on some shit that i have never experienced before yeah. And you expect me to fuck you for eight hours straight. You're a fucking delusional. I'm tired, bitch. I'm trying to go to sleep. I mean, I would say if you're fucking for eight hours straight, there's got to be some like <laughs> cocaine or methamphetamine involved. You know, we're not talking about my festivities. <laughs> <laughs> cocaine. I would say cocaine. I'm like, you're trying to get me fired out here. <laughs> no, I'm not. But I'm just saying like the times that I fucked that long, there was either methamphetamine or cocaine involved. And when I'm on the times that I've passed that I've been on methamphetamine or cocaine, Man, I am fucking undestructible. Yeah. I will fucking murder the shit out. You know what I mean? I will make sure that by the end of the session, you will pull out the vegetable package from the freezer and put that on your pussy. I know. You're cool like, that bitch down. You're like, why does my dick hurt so fucking much? <laughs> fucking panty burn on the side of the dick. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. And I feel like, you know, a lot of people always say how, like, sex is supposed to be more meaningful, blah, 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 blah. Which I get it, it's true, but I feel like we are in a... I'm sounding like a hoe when I say this. It's all right. I feel like you can be, like, for myself, like, I feel like I can be a hoe and, like, fuck a lot of dudes, but I'm very selective if, like, I made it meet a dude, right? And I'm like, nah, I'm not going to fuck you because you are you could be hub hubby material. So you're going to just string them on? Yeah. But when you're stringing them on, are you fucking all these other dudes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that bad? No, it's it's the it's it's, it's like what you won't know doesn't kill you, right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like what? And I always feel like that too. Like even He's when like, it comes, to, it comes to like uh, you know, like even a, just a relationship. You know, like what don't what you don't know uh, won't kill you and shit. And sometimes yeah. it, it's better that way. Not that you know, if you are in a long standing relationship, that you want those fucking type of secrets to be uh, kept from you, you know, but at, you know, if it comes to that point, well, we need to have an open conversation. Yeah. You know, cause maybe we can work something out. And you know, <laughs> I was in like a, a long-term relationship for like a long time for like six years. And you know, like we'll get into that later. It was so toxic, but there was even times where like I towards the ending of our relationship, I was just so it was just so toxic and I was so over it that I was just like, you know, I don't give a fuck. Fuck who you want. Yeah. Like we don't have three someone to do it. Like at that point, I just didn't care emotionally anymore. So you were down with the threesomes, huh? Yeah. Have you been in threesomes? I've been in a five sum. You've been in a five sum. Yes. Damn. And so if there's a five sum, how many girls, how Four many bitches, dudes? one dude. Four bitches, one dude. Damn, that, that dude, you know, that night was crazy. That dude was a fucking soldier, huh? Did he fucking murder everything out? You know what? It's very, very uh, patchy. I don't remember a lot from that night. Were you blacked out? Yeah, I was really, you know, what's crazy is that I was at one of my homegirls party that night in a uh, fucking Montebello. So I don't know if you've ever been like on the 60 on San Gabriel where the McDonald's is at next to the Montebello mall. Yeah. So she lives right there. And I just, the like the, patches that i remember is getting there drinking tequila smoking weed then transitioning to jack doing a little coke and then because like i was going down and he was like yo let's do this and i had like a couple of my homegirls with me and i was like fuck it let's let's fucking this will go all night fuck it because yeah. that's the thing that sucks is like when i drink i get horny yeah. And I'm kind of down for whatever. And sometimes I have to catch myself because I put myself in fucked up situations. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, fuck it. We're all going to die one day. So yeah, experiences. And um, 
I remember leaving the party. He's like, I'm gonna meet you at your house. I'm like, cool. And um, I just remember driving on the 60 and being like, fuck, I shouldn't be driving right now. But fuck it. I need a fuck. So I'm going to fucking drive. And I just remember when I was driving on the 60 going to East L.A. because I was staying there at that time. Um, there was a fucking semi truck on fire. And I just remember feeling like the heat on my face because the windows were rolling down yeah. and being so like shook and then getting home, fucking eating pussy and then waking up. Oh, so you're bisexual, I know. Damn, did that just slip? <laughs> you saw how casual that was. Are it's you, not. It's not that you, I'm. Are you ever with females without a dude? Yes. Well, it's not that I'm. I don't really consider myself bisexual because I love dick and I will fucking marry a dude. Yeah. I just feel like women are beautiful, and if I want to eat pussy from time to time, I should be able to do that because who doesn't love to eat pussy? So when you eat pussy, when you eat because of a, a, a female that eats another female's pussy knows what a female wants yeah so w- w- what is your go-to when you're eating some pussy like what is what is what is the uh, uh like it's not eight so i could tell you that it's not it's not eight it's licked. you said eight you know you're saying like licking eight. oh it's not eight yeah what is no. it what is it i feel like you just have to be into it like i feel like you know when you're getting your dick sucked and you know like damn this bitch is in love with me because she's fucking going hard in the paint like yeah she's like fucking making love to my dick like yeah. that's how it is with eating pussy i feel like you have to eat pussy passionately and how long would this would, would so if you're eating pussy passionately, like how long would a session passionately go for? Like you taking your time, yeah, you're licking the thighs, you know, you're going down to the taint, you know what I mean? The, yeah, the, the booty. like you're licking the booty or fucking licking, I don't know what the fuck it's called on your vagina, but like, you know, the bottom part that's like the inside, but like the bottom part before your asshole, like will yeah. be a dude's gooch. Like yeah. I feel like that's the most important part. So like going up and down and like fucking eating that shit like it's a bomb ass mango slurp that shit eat that shit fucking suck on the bone like you know when you have a bomb ass mango and you're just like i don't give a fuck how the fuck this looks right now if i look gay fuck it because i'm fucking this shit up right now that's how you eat it practice on a mango fellas mango huh (laughs) honestly when i eat a mango i cut it (laughs) i cut the i cut the sides off you're not enjoying it damn you just cut all the skin and then just put that shit in your mouth Huh. Before you know it, you see fucking bone. You're like, wait, it's gone already? And it's like wet, slippery, your hands are wet, everything's wet, sticky. Same shit. I'm so getting- so <laughs> so if you ever if you ever get married, um, would you be open to having a like with females get involved with your with your marriage? You know, this is like the number one question people ask me all the time. It de- you know, and this is are my you gonna be jealous. And this is real about this shit. Yeah, and you know what? It's crazy to like I've always told myself I'm never gonna get married because I never want to be divorced. Gotcha. So my biggest and that's uh, trauma alert. Yeah. I come, you know, and um, I just seen my mom go in so many different relationships. You know, my mom was a heroin addict and um, she did, you know, she was an alcoholic, heroin addict, fucking did crack, crystal meth, everything. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I was conceived pretty much by uh, my mom pretty much giving pussy for crack. Gotcha. So I've always seen my mom jump from men to men and just, you know, selling her herself as, you know, a fucking object. Yeah, object so to get her high. Yeah, to get her high. So that in itself didn't really give me the, I guess, example of like what a marriage family should be. So I just always told myself like I never want to be like my mom. I never want to be like treated as like a option or subject or like a fucking piece of meat. So but you, like, but you were in a five sum. I know, which is crazy. That I'm telling you, fucked up trauma. Yeah, hundred percent. Like it's trauma. Like yeah. I, I mean, I'm not saying that to slap you in the face. No, I'm just but it, no, though, but it's but it, true. It, it relates to your. It childhood. relates to my so childhood. It's, so it's all about uh, raising your girls properly. Exactly. So they feel that they don't need to uh, go down that road. But 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 at the same time, uh, shout out to all the girls that do go down that road, and shout out to yourself too, because um, that makes that makes uh, life so much more interesting. No, it is. It's 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 interesting too, how you go through so much shit in your life, and you know, because for even for myself, like growing up in the system, like I was super like I'm not like nothing's fucking wrong with me. I don't fucking need therapy. Like what the fuck you think I'm crazy? And then I'm fucking 19, and I'm like my relationship is shit. Why the fuck am I letting? Why am I letting my dude fucking hit me? Why am I letting my man treat me like a fucking object? Maybe because I'm fucked up in the head. You you know? Have you ever let anyone hit you? Yeah. yeah, I was in a very toxic relationship and 
it's shit like that where like I finally went to therapy and I like addressed those issues and I started to value myself and I started to acknowledge that I am a person and I'm just because I came from a traumatic, you know, background, that doesn't mean I'm shit. Just because my life was shit and I was put in a shit situation doesn't mean that my life's going to be shit. And that's a misconception of people that go through trauma is they stay in like a victim mentality of like, poor me, poor me. I deserve this when you don't. Yeah. So it took a long time for me to get to that place. Yeah, I still I still put myself in like five sums and shit. And it's like for me, it's more of enjoyment now. It's just fun. It's, it's like, fun. It's like, and it's, it's like going to the fucking carnival park or something yeah. like that. Like, you know what? I'm going to go on this ride, that ride, and that ride. Yeah. And yeah. so for me, it's like, I've thrill. always just told myself, like, I don't want to be married. And I think my theory behind it is kind of like, would I rather be married and have my husband cheat on me? Or would I be married and allow my husband to let me know if he's cheating on me? And then if that little bitch wants to come at me and be like, I'm fucking your husband. I'm like, yeah, bitch, I know. Now you feel stupid. Yeah, bitch. Now I'm going to fucking eat your pussy. Yeah. Like, what's <laughs> up? Like, you thought you were going to. And that's the thing, too. People don't understand is like, because I've, you know, I fucked with like dudes with, what, with, with girlfriends, dudes with husbands. And it's like, he'll never leave his wife yeah. ever. And like, people don't understand that. And I got to a point in my life you know, where I understood, like, he may tell you he's going to leave his wife, but bitch, he's not. So stay in your lane and act like the side hoe because that's what the fuck you are. <laughs> <laughs> Spitting facts on here. Damn. <laughs> Damn. I like how she keeps it real and is sharing her raw story and being vulnerable, 100%. It's know? true. And, like, and that, and you know, it's funny because... I feel like people don't want and like people and people like little trolls on here will be like, you're nothing but a home wrecker. Fuck you. And it's like, bitch, shut the fuck up. I'll fuck your husband. What's up? <laughs> you know, but it's like it's true. And like sometimes people like as a person that's slept with people that are married, it's like shit just happens. And it's like for me, my whole thing is like, I don't give a fuck if you're married. You got a fucking girlfriend. Just don't bring that shit to my front door. Yeah. You control your wife. Yeah, because. There's a reason why you're coming out. You're stepping out of a relationship. And that has nothing to do with me. If that, whatever is going on in your life is you. Yeah, it's on you. That ain't on me. You know what I mean? So it's like, don't pull me in that. If you want to fuck me, cool. Because this is your escape. So if anything, wife, relax. Because I'm helping your relationship. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But people need to be more honest about that. Yeah, for sure. Like, why are you going to be mad about him cheating when he's been cheating on you for the last 30 time and all you do is fucking get a headache and cuss him out? And now you're stressing him out for him to go vent to the fucking side hoe. Bitch, if you're not going to leave him, shut the fuck up. Yeah. What you going to do? Keep complaining? He's going to keep fucking somebody else. So stay in your fucking little place. Be happy. And let him fucking peace. Yeah. Let's be real. True that. True that. <laughs> You're like, this is too much. <laughs> no, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't too, it ain't too much. This is this is just a conversation that I really haven't had on this podcast. This is dope and shit, you know. And I, I like I like exploring it and I like hearing your input on it. So hundred percent. So moving forward, mm -hmm. you know, um you've been in uh what is it, thirty foster homes? I've been in like, yeah, more probably more. I don't know. That's why when you're asking me, I was like, fuck shit. I don't even know. I've been in so many different foster homes, placements, juvie, like so much shit. And so, um, and this this stems from what you were saying, the the people that brought you into this world. Mm -hmm. your, your mom was a heroin addict. She was a drug addict. Uh, she was using her body as an object to get drugs. And along that way, uh, she got pregnant with you. Yeah. Well, there's four of us. I'm the baby. You're the baby. And so is, there's four of you, but was it with the same dude or different dudes? No, we all have different dads. You all have different dads. Yeah. So. Well, so with my oldest brother, um, Anthony, he's like fucking 36 now. My mom got, that was my mom's first son. So my mom was about 16 when she got pregnant with him. And she actually got raped by a cop, which is crazy. And um, the cop pretty much didn't do shit. Was kind of like fuck, like have an abortion. And my mom didn't. He was never fucking there for her. And um, yeah, so that's like my oldest brother's situation. And then my sister at that time, my mom was already like using and stuff like that. So the dude that my sister's 
um, dad was pretty much like the like the rat, like not the rat, but like the dirt of the city. So kind of like the home, you think, you know, in all hoods, you know, like that one dude who's like homeless, but like he knows everybody and like he's cool with the gangs, but like he's fucking homeless and nobody fucks with him. Yeah. That's the dude that my mom was, um, got pregnant by. With your, for your with sister. With my sister. With your sister. And yeah. The, and the dude that you're, that you were from, do you know him? Yeah. He's, yeah. well, he's, well, my mom and my, my mom and my dad have already passed, but my dad is actually a pimp. Which is crazy. He was a pimp. Huh? Yeah. Was what was he? Uh, so he was the uh, black and Puerto Rican dude. Yeah. Okay. Which is like crazy, and he actually he's from Pomona. He's from Pomona. Mm-hmm. Right? That's crazy. And so, um, and so you said both of your parents have passed. Yeah. So my dad, you know what's crazy about my dad is that I remember like when I was maybe like five. Fuck, it's like so long ago. But when I was like five, I could remember like my dad picking me up and my siblings and like always getting like like every like sunday eating like fucking chocolate milk and donuts for like a while and then it just like stopped you know and it's just like i think my mom just there's a lot of answers i don't know because my mom's dead already so i can't these are just like unanswered questions but um that stopped and then when i got taken away and i was older i was probably like this is like 20, 2009, so I'm probably like fucking 10, 12, I was like 16 or 15. Fuck, I'm bad at math. 2009? 2009, yeah. yeah. And um, well, It was basically uh, 10 years ago, and you're 26 right now, so you're about 16. Yeah, so 16, yeah. right? So at this time, I was like getting, the, um, I was in a, in a foster home. The mom was trying to get um, fucking legal guardianship of me, my foster mom. And um, so for those of you that don't know what that's it, that is, it's basically like, so there's a foster parent who basically just looks after the kids, but then there's a legal guardian. So that's pretty much like you're basically claiming all the rights for the child, but you're still in the system. So they still have the benefits of being in the system, but like you're their, you're their parent. So all medical fucking schooling, everything is up to you, not the social worker. So that's the difference. So I was going to get legal guardian. Um, my mom at that time was gonna get the guardianship of me. Was she a white lady? She was from El Salvador. El Salvador, that's interesting. Yeah, it seems like always, uh, for some reason, uh, white people are foster parents. Bitch, you were. I don't huh? mean to call you a bitch, but yeah. what? Don't call me that. I know, I was like, yeah. my bad. Yeah, it was. It's all good. <laughs> my bad. It was reflex. <laughs> it's all good. You used to, Where? You used to talk I call home, myself. You used to talk in your homegirls and your homeboys. I know, I mean, my bad. But, um, um, I've never been, you know what, crazy? I've never been in a foster home with a white people. Okay. I was, but, 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 but so with foster care, parents, they, it's almost a business for them too because they get paid a lot of money for that, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, it depends. So like for a kid like me, I'm considered at risk. I mean, we're all at risk, but I'm more at risk because, you know, when I was in foster care, I, you know, I was on probation most of the time. So I'm like, there's different levels. So it's like level six, level seven, level eight, level nine, level 10, 11, 12. And so at that time, when I was with her, I was actually, they had put me on medication because I fucking have mood swings. Like, yeah, I'm fucking pissed. Yeah. Sorry, I'm hot and cold. So if you have like medication and shit, you get paid more, gotcha. which is crazy. So that's why a lot of foster parents um, usually take in kids like that. Yeah. So, yeah, she gets like a pretty good amount of money for me. A lot of foster homes do, too. But, you know, at that time, she she was an amazing foster mom to me. I lived with her for like almost two years. Gotcha. Um, I just like completely fucked up that situation, though, just because I was was in a place where I hadn't dealt with all my trauma and I like totally sabotaged that situation. (coughs) Yeah. In regards. Got that loud over there. (laughs) (coughs) (coughs) So in other words, you sabotaged it in the fact that uh, you were just kind of like wilding out and you were, um, you were kind of like just going against the grain. Are going against, going against what was good for you or beneficial for you at the time. Well, what ha- ended up happening let, was. Let me ask you this real quick before. When, yes. What age were you when your parents passed? So 16, 2009. And then my mom passed in 2015. 
So that was five years. I was 21. Okay. Go. So my dad, but again, let's go to end to go back and end that little chapter. I was getting legal guardianship from um, Susana, which was my mom at the time. Um, El Salvadorian woman, fucking amazing. And um, at my court hearing for her to get legal guardianship, I mean, my dad showed up and was like, I want to get rights to my daughter. And then it's crazy because I remember sitting in the lobby with her and her being, and a couple of weeks prior to that, she had kind of mentioned something. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. When your pops uh, uh, rolled up to get uh, asked for legal guardianship, did he have a pimp suit on? All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You know what's funny is that. Did he have a purple suit on? It was like beige. It was beige. Okay, my bad. And he yeah. had some fucking Stacey Adams on. Damn, he was gangster. Like, up. like a cane and everything. And Are you it's serious? Yes, swear to oh, God. Little old, little he... fucking afro. And you know what's funny is a couple weeks prior to that, they had um that was, that was the weed kicking in right there. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> all good. A couple weeks prior to that, my social worker had hit me up and was like, Hey, um, what do you think about meeting your dad? That's what it's I'm good. I don't smoke weed. That's good. I wish, you know, I wish I could smoke weed, but I just get too paranoid. I feel like I'm going to die. I was, if you were going to hit this, <laughs> I was going to let you finish it all because you're talking about all them five sons you've been through and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, yeah, so she had, you know, hit me up and was like, what do you feel about meeting your dad? And I was just kind of like, uh, I don't know. Like, that's, I guess, you know, but I never told her like yeah i'm with it so my foster mom i guess had secretly been talking to my social worker and my social worker knew he was gonna bombard our fucking meeting at you know edmonds in fucking downtown LA, uh, mallory park is that mallory park in front of cal state la so my mom well my mom my foster mom at the time was like yo i think that's your dad and i'm like what and she's like la nanito right there so, was that the first time you've seen him yeah since wow. i was like five and so how old are you again? You're 20, 16? I'm 16. 16. So right. it's like 10 years, wow. 11 years. Wow. So I'm like that's laying on her and I'm like. That's fucking crazy, nah, dude. that's not my fucking dad. And like, I was like hella embarrassed because I'm like, I see this dude in like a beige ass suit with some Stacey Adams and a cane and a little afro. Like, who the fuck do you think you are? Like, why didn't you wear jeans and a t-shirt like everyone else? <laughs> like, I'm, what are you doing I mean, right he, now? He was dressed to impress. To just like, let the what? judge know that, hey, man, I ain't fucking no dirty ass fool. I got my yeah. shit going on. So then I'm like, nah, nah, it's not. So now I'm getting like a little anxious. And then my, my attorney comes in and she's like, hey, I have to talk to you. I'm like, fuck, I think this bitch is right. She's like, so your dad's here and he kind of want to get custody of you. And I'm like, whoa. How did that feel? It was a lot. Was it emotional? It was, you know, it wasn't seeing, really. Seeing him for the first time? It wasn't really emotional because this is someone I didn't know. So he didn't mean nothing to you. Nothing. And so to this point where you're in court with this Salvadorian uh, mother of yours, right? Mm -hmm. Mom, right? Um, how long were you with her and how much of a bond did you have? With I was her? there for almost two years. And like, this is somebody that, you know, because I, I put her through hell, you know, like she late you. night fucking police pickups, you know, ditching school, fucking fighting bitches and getting fucking battery charges you know, like I put her through some shit. She rolled with you. And she rolled with me. You know, I got my first job with her because she was a GM at Little Caesars at that time. And it's funny because that's honestly where I got a lot of my 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 ethics. You know, I I told her one day, like, yo, I'm going to get an iPhone. And she was like, all right, I'll give you 60 bucks for the iPhone. And it was like 100 and like something at that time. And she's like, so how are you going to come up with the rest? I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, how are you going to come up with the rest of the money? I'm like, uh, aren't you going to buy me the iPhone? She's like, no. So tell me how you're going to come up with the rest of the money. I'm like, well, maybe I'll just get a job. And she's like, all right, uh, you're going to come with me to work on Monday. You're going to fucking make some pizzas. That's dope. And I was like, she taught you hold up, what? And then, and you know, and me being, you know, entitled is like, you get fucking paid for me. Buy me the fucking iPhone. <laughs> you know, and she's like, no, like you have to earn things in life. And I fucking went to work. That was my first fucking job. And I got my fucking iPhone. That's dope. She taught you something right there. She yeah. Said, she said, I mean, as soon as she said 60 bucks, she said it was a hundred and something. So the first thing that registered in my head is like, all right, she's willing to pay half. 
Yeah. You know, and that and that and that's a dope lesson right there. You know, it teaches you to work. And so, like you said, she taught you some some just some just some ethics foundation shit. You know, what I mean, yeah, shit it's you, crazy. You need to know you need to know in life. Everything can't be handed to you. But coming from someone that's that's been with your background and shit, it's so hard. It, it was probably really hard for her to tell you, no, I'm not going to pay yeah. for it all. You know, I'm just going to give you 60 bucks because she wanted you. But she at the same time, she goes, I got to teach her something. Right. And you know, what's crazy is that there, it's very hard to find foster parents like that. You know, it's very I've been in foster homes where they didn't give a fuck if I fucking ate. Yeah, they, they, they didn't give a fuck. They're trying to get that check. Yeah, they didn't. You know, I had a foster parent in fucking El Sereno. It was like fucking 10 of us up in there. And, and they're all foster kids. Yeah, all of us foster kids. I was probably about fucking 12 or 13 at the time. And her and her husband had like 10 fucking foster kids. And she would be like, you get up at eight and you don't fucking come home to 10. I don't give a fuck what you do, but don't come back before 10. That's crazy. Like, what the? F and I'm like 12, 13. What the fuck do I do? Yeah. You know, and like, that's how I got involved with like a lot of shit that I shouldn't have been involved in. Yeah. And it's like you're so you're and it's crazy because it's like people that come from DCFS is like. I grew up in a traumatic environment, right? And then DCFS swoops in and they're like, ha ha, we're the hero. We're going to take you to a safe place. And then I go back to more fucking trauma. And I end up with more trauma than what I fucking began with. How the fuck does that happen? When you're getting paid for me, our tax dollars are paying you to give me an upper hand in life. But all you do is consider is continue to put me lower and lower and lower. Just a paycheck. It's and crazy. And, and once and once you go bad, like a piece of fruit, you know what I mean? Then you just get recycled back into the system, you know, and they get another fucking paycheck. Yeah. You know, it's unfortunate. My girl was in uh, foster homes as well. Oh, shit. Yeah. The one you met. Uh, and uh, and um, sh she can she tells me stories too, like her sister. uh was abused in one and yeah yeah I, I i know for a fact um i think it's thank you for drinking that water and i was like i'm gonna drink some water yeah, drink some water <laughs> please she so she when she when we got when she got here i asked her i said would you like a you know you want a beer you want a jack and coke and she goes yeah give me a jack on the rocks <laughs> sorry i already knew that you know what i mean she was about that life and she's with the business and i mean we're gonna have a good podcast and shit. real quick hey tell me you guys hear that drum beat right there Tell me you hear that real quick and we'll and we'll move forward with this uh with this podcast. Someone said he rolled up in his Cadillac. <laughs> he probably fucking did. <laughs> you are right. It is getting hot in here. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> she was like, I thought you had it in a garage or something. And I, I said, know. Well, I said, Well, it gets hot in here like a fucking garage. You know, shit. Uh, tell me you guys hear that drum beat. Drum beat. All right, cool. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, man. Uh Ella crew, Ella. Hey, so I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was just gonna go on Instagram Live. Yeah, do it. Do it. Go on Instagram Live. Let them know where we at. You know, shout out to all 77 people tapped in right now. Yes, we got like you know what? When I came in here, we had we were at 77. And we dropped to 75, and we've been consistent with 77. So shout out to all 77 of you guys fucking with us. Yeah, hard but, right now. Yeah, we went. Um, we were at 95 for a minute. Oh shit, really? I didn't even pay. I'm gonna yeah. use this as a stand. Go ahead, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, put that in. I mean, you can't really see us. But... No, put you on, put it on yourself so they can oh, see. Oh, okay. You. You, yeah. you don't wanna come out? No, nah, I'm cool. I'm cool. All put right, all right. Yeah. Oh fuck, I'm on my fake account. <laughs> the fake account. <laughs> oh shit. Wrong account. The stalker <laughs> account. <laughs> shit, I have like five fake accounts. We're all the five sums and the fake Oh no, wait, I was on my right account. What the fuck? Okay, here we go, here we go. No, but yeah, so to get back to, I feel like you got me like, kind of like, high. might have. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I feel a little lightheaded. <laughs> it's hot in here. It is that too. It's hot in here and we're, and we're drinking hard liquor. I know. And, I need to and, re, I need and, to re up. Yeah. The heat, I got Low you right key. now. I, I got you. I got you right now. <laughs> no, but, but <laughs> finish. Go ahead. But to end the story, um, cause it gets more crazy, but. So I had my foster mom from El Salvador, right? We we're getting a legal guardian, legal guardianship. And then my dad comes and my attorney basically is like, yo, how do you feel about your dad? Blah, blah, blah. So this dude bombards the place and is like, I'm trying to get custody of my child back. 
blah, blah, blah. He fucking goes through the parenting classes. Uh, three months later, he's pretty much getting ready to get me, you know, showed proof that he had his um, house, you know, blah, blah, blah. I have two twin brothers also, by the way. Yeah. And um, and, oh, and another sister from him. So there's three other siblings from my dad's side. And the day that, and this is no bullshit either. The day that I'm supposed to go live with my dad, he passes away. Are you fucking serious? I swear. The day that you're supposed to go live with your dad, he pa- what he's a what does he pass away? From? And you know what's crazy is um he so they said that he felt like sick the night before, right? So he was just like, "Yo, I'm just gonna um take some Nyquil. I'm gonna like go to sleep." He never he never woke up. Yeah. And so, what was the cause of death? I honestly I don't know because I was I was so young at the time, but yeah. he died in his sleep. I don't know from what to be to be honest with you, just because I never really like checked in or like I mean I was so young at the time. For me, I felt like I was more because honestly I didn't want to go with my dad. I really didn't. This is somebody that I remember actually coming home from school. Uh-huh. I was like in high school at the time, so I remember coming home to my foster moms. I, ha- I had like stayed late because I was like in cheer at the time, and um. I walked in the house and there's like 40 fucking people in my house. Like my attorney, my social worker, the supervisor, my therapist, my CFS, my wraparound team. And I'm like, yo, like what the fuck is happening? And my foster mom's is looking at me like blank. Like, hey, sit down. So this is in the process of you possibly going with your pops. Yeah. So and this so, is- so so the word has it. And at the time, how do you feel about that? Before we move forward. How do like you before I found out or before, before once you found, I found out? Before you found out. No, when you found out that it's a possibility that you're gonna go with your pops before he passed. Yeah. What, oh, what like were the, how? What were the thoughts? Honestly, I had? didn't want to go. You didn't want to go. You want to stay with. Yeah, I, t- I remember telling my social worker like, I don't give a fuck if he does parenting classes. Like, this is I don't know this person, so you expect me to have. Excuse me, y'all. You guys expect me. You expect my dad to go through three months of parenting classes and me visiting him once a week for you know two hours, three hours, three hours at a time. And I'm supposed to just go like live with him. I don't fucking know this dude. Like you haven't been here since I was five. I don't like, I don't know you. I've been living in this home for almost two years. Like I have a mom, I have a dad, I have a sister. Like I have a whole life. I have cheer. I have my friends. I have, you know, my clubs. Like I have a fucking job working at little Caesars. Like I have a whole shit going here. And you want me to move to Pomona? Yeah. What? Like, I was pissed about the situation. Yes. You know, but they're like, give your dad a chance. You know, he's like fighting for you. He's trying. Blah, 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 blah. So you should, you know, you should make it work. Yeah. And then so the the not wanting to be a dick person in me is like, fuck, and I'm going to give him a chance. And I remember like around that time just praying so much like, God, whatever is meant to be, let it be. Like, God, just show me the sign. Like, find like give me peace with this because i'm not finding any peace yeah and um so the day that i was supposed to go i, I came home from cheer practice and you know all the people were there and i, I just knew something wrong because was wrong because my foster mom was just looking at me like she never looked so like she was the type of person that like always knew the right thing to say when to say it she was always very content and very confident yeah. even if you knew like she bullshitted the response like she was a she was never a type of person that was caught off guard so yeah. to see her like in distress was like fuck something's wrong, you know. And she's like, "Why don't you sit down, Miha?" Like da da da. And I'm like, "What the fuck is happening right now?" Yeah. And they're like, "Well, we just want to let you know that your your dad passed." And I was like, "Okay, that's it." Huh. And they're like, "What? Like, how do you feel about that?" And I'm like, "How the fuck do you expect me to cry me a river over somebody I don't fucking know? I don't give a fuck if he's dead." Rest in peace. Uh-huh. I don't know this person. Like I have no, I have no emotional bond to this person. So you called this whole ass meeting with all these people wasting their fucking time just to tell me my dad died. You could have fucking sent a text. Yeah. What? Like, how do you ex- like? How do you? This is just my sperm. Like this, like to me, it's like this is just my sperm donor. This is just someone that just gave me life for whatever fucking reason. God knows why I'm here, but like you were never a father to me. And even whatever happened with whatever happened between you and my mom, 
you still didn't make the fight. Like if I have a fucking kid, I don't give a fuck if my baby mama's tripping. Like, bitch, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to fucking court. I'm gonna see my fucking kid because that's my fucking kid. I'll fucking move mountains for my kid. You didn't do that. So how do I respect you as a man? It doesn't make sense. Was he doing prison time at the time? I don't know. I have no I, I have no idea. So maybe he did. I don't let know. Me, let me ask you this. So I get that though. I maybe get that. I'm just I, low key angry. No, you sh- as you should, <laughs> as you should. I just, you know what it is. I, I know a lot of dudes that have done a lot of prison time, and I was away from my son. Um, I have a I have a 20 year old son, right? Mm. And um, I was I was away from him. Thank you, boo. Wow, thank you. You're a real one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Shout out to your girl. She's she a, she's the real queen here. No doubt about it. <laughs> I feel solid and shit. She likes these conversations and she's cool with the open conversations. Like me and you can have this conversation. I don't got a jealous girl. And that's you know dope. I mean? And, and you know, it's crazy sometimes too, as I, I've said this before, sometimes I'll be at a fucking, uh, a, 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 a stop sign and there'll be a girl walking across the street and I'll be like, man, that girl got a big old ass and shit. You know what I mean, and then I'll catch myself and I'll look at my girl and she looking at that ass too. Yeah. You see, that's <laughs> like the type of relationship I want one day. I'm not too mad about that. You know, like, you know, and that's cool because it's like, it's not even so much about her being jealous. It's just that you guys are so content and you're, you guys are so secure in your relationship that you're able to be open. And it's like, why? Like, that's my dude. Why the fuck I got a trip for? Her? And yeah. that's like, that's, that's the ultimate level of like relationship goals, you know? Yeah. And I feel like people don't get that nowadays. It's all like, people always talk about like, I want some toxic shit, bitch. I don't want you hitting up my voicemails 78 times, bitch. I have a job. I'm going to sleep. Like, I don't want that. Like, people are so into, like, the toxic, like, toxic. Ooh, I want someone that's toxic. Like, it's weird. I would say they don't necessarily say it, but they end up in that relationship, and they know that it could possibly go there, right? Mm -hmm. You know? And so, I mean, they go, like, sometimes there's there's bras that say, uh, I don't like my hair pulled. You know, but she loves her hair pulled. Yeah, during sex. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying, though. You know, but, no, yeah. But I, I mean, I, I, I get it. Like, girls like the fucking, uh, there's a lot of females out there that love, um, uh, maybe dudes like myself, you know, rough around the edge. Yeah. You know, doesn't always say the nicest, the right things, however you want to say it. Um, maybe some females are turned on by that. But the females that you would say that are turned on by that, do they have daddy issues? You know what? I think for like, and this is just me speaking for myself. Like, I feel like I've always been attracted to hood dudes because hood dudes have been through some shit. Yeah. Like, they've gone through the fucking struggle, whether it's been in jail, you fucking going through whatever, like gang shit, drug, drug deals. Like, you fucking risk your life every day. Like, you've gone through some shit and you've done some shit. I get that. So, so in your psych, in your psychic, psychic, whatever you call it, it's it's <laughs> like you don't want to be with some punk ass fool that ain't never been through shit because you've been through some shit. No, it's not and even. So you can relate with someone else not, better. Not really. It's because hood dudes are humble. Hood dudes are very humble, and they understand that. Especially when they're busted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but they're really humble and they're considerate and they're empathetic and it's like people always say like there's so much more that goes in a relationship i mean i'm the most humblest when i'm in prison and then and then i and then i get Baby, my can you can you I, send me send them a commissary please i love you and then i get my money order and then i'm like man fuck this bitch. i'm not calling you bitch in a week <laughs> I'm just fucking i'll be, write you you get my letter eventually bitch <laughs> i mean it really be like that a little bit i no, used to, but I really used, i used a female um this one particular time and which created a uh, child and which created me going, see me going back to jail and shit. Um, wow. Let's, let's hear that story. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying though, but after I did that, I told God, I said a prayer to God and I said, God, I will never use a female again. So I was in, it I taught was, you a lesson. I was, well, I was in prison and, and, um, and she was taking care of me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I sold her the world. You know what I mean? <laughs> I said, girl, I'm going to put a ring on that finger. Came I'm out gonna, and was like, bitch, I'm who? Gonna, <laughs> I'm going to pay for your nails every fucking weekend. Whoop. I mean, I put the super sauce on that shit, right? Yeah. I put the sriracha sauce on that shit. I love sriracha. <laughs> yeah. And um, and and so anyways, um, I get out 
And I'm like, man, fuck this ugly ass bitch. You know what I mean? I need to get the fuck away from her. I need to get the fuck away from her. No, she wasn't, nah. a, she wasn't a big bitch. I mean, shout out to all the big bitches out there. The big we bitch, love the BB dubs. Yeah, the BBWs. You know what I mean, they need that. They need the love too. And I, no, 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 no discrimination right here. But I'm just saying though, like, so um, it ended up happening is she got pregnant. Oh, I, di- I didn't want to have the baby. It, be- it turned into a big fight. Between you and her? Between me and her. And to long, long story short is, uh, she, I mean, she called the cops and she told the cops that I uh, committed, what? I had a gun and I whoop de whoop whoop. And it, it wasn't true. It Shut was, the fuck up. It wasn't up. true. And she knew where I was at the time. So the cops came and they, uh, long story short, they arrested me, you know? So when that, when I went back, I was in prison. It was crazy because I went to the hole for a riot in, in, in the prison system, CDC. Uh-huh. And um, I, I uh, when I got out of the hole, from that riot, um, I had a phone call. I was kind of like in a, uh, I was in C status. And they, yeah. they but they, anyways, they gave me a phone because we we're coming out the hole or some shit like that. Yeah. And they gave me a call. So I called her up and this is what she told me. And this is me like being in there for, uh, since she called the cops on me, I was in there for maybe like six months or something like that. Shut up. Eight months or something like that. And, and so I called her up and she's like, hey, I want to tell you something, you know? And I was like, what's up? And she goes, uh, I got married. You're like, fuck you and your husband. I'm going to kill you when I get out, bitch. She, no, she said, <laughs> so she says, she goes, I got married. And so this is prior. She just had the baby. Oh, she kept your baby. Yeah. She just had the baby. Oh, shit. You know, and she put me in, in, in jail. And then got married. And then got married. Yo. And so I was like. All right, well that, uh, like, that's what do cool. You want? I was just calling. I was just calling her a hundred percent just to see how you know my my ba- my son was, you know. And and she goes, I got married. And I said, uh, I said, is it, this is exactly what I told her. I swear to God, you know what I mean. And I didn't want to be with her, but I needed to know this. Yeah. I said, is it with one of my homies? <gasps> and she goes, Nah. Oh, thank God! I was like, We're gonna kill your homie. And I said, Is it? <laughs> I said, Is it with one of my enemies? And she said, Nah. And, oh. I said, and, and and I go, hey, tell that dude I said congratulations. And she goes <laughs> like this. She goes like this. She's on the phone, right? Uh-huh. And so I didn't know at the time, but I guess he was sitting right there. And she goes, uh, babe, he said congratulations. <laughs> oh, bitch ass fool. Yeah, bitch ass, dude. Yeah, You're hey, like, hey, homie. I mean, you know, he had turned. Yeah, I, I mean, I really meant it. You know what I mean? But yeah, uh, it's just I mean, crazy. for a dude to get yourself in a situation like that, I mean, damn, bro. You know what I mean? You were you were swing you were swinging for the dirt, I guess. You know? Yeah. Uh, instead of the fences, but, but um, you know, that's your pickle. But yeah, but anyways, um, it, it's uh, uh, so I I vowed just so I don't fall off track. I vowed. I said a prayer to God. I said, God, you know what? My bad, man. You know what I mean? I ain't going to be, uh, I won't ever use a female again. Yeah. You know, I won't ever use a female again, just like that, just for me to get ahead or for me to have somewhere to come out of prison or for me to have a fucking soup in my fucking locker. And so I, I just believe that I believe in a lot of karma and shit. And I, and I, I believe in that shit too. And I made a vow. And ever since then, I have never used a female like that before again in my life. Yeah, so I'm I'm being nosy as bitch right now. Yeah. So like, have you seen that kid? Yeah, it's my son. Oh, that's your twenty year old. That's my twenty year old. Yo, that's crazy. He's heard the story. That's crazy. How does he feel about that? I mean, he's so my with my son is my son's twenty years old. Uh, when I got I got out the pen, uh, maybe about six seven years ago. Um, since then, I've done very well for myself. Uh, yeah, I, I put myself in schooling and, and just I've, shout I've, out to I've, getting into UCLA. Yeah, UCLA. I'm in UCLA right now. I started on Tuesday yesterday. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, I've I've I've, I've really stayed focused. But uh, I've tried to uh, help him out. He's lived with me several times. Okay, and uh, it's been a rough patch. Because he was like, fool, you weren't, you weren't there for me, fool, when I was going through You're like, shit. your mom put me in fucking jail. Well, he knows that. And then when <laughs> I tried to get out from when I got out from jail, I tried to fucking like do right. And she was like, she had an attitude like, motherfucker, this is a high, it's my way or the highway. That's exactly what came You know, out of I mouth. hate females like that. Because, you know, I, and this is a thing too, I, but that goes back to maturity. You know, and it and it's shit in her life. Like bitches that I hate bitches like that. I mean, she wanted me to get back with her. I think she wanted the dick back in her. But still, know? it's and like that, and that wasn't going to happen. And- yeah, but it's like at the end of the day, it's like you should be mad at your mom because your mom's bitterness kept me away from you. Yeah, 
You know, I and mean, it's like I don't understand females I like mean, that. I mean, I take some of the blame. You know, I mean, you know, I'm not, and, and, I'm not and, and, no fucking yeah, angel. No, you know? like it's both parties, I, I, but I, still, I, I take my share. You know, but I've told him too, like fool, like I tried to whoop you whoop. But anyway, so I when I got out, he's 20 right now. Damn. So he was like, he was like 13, 14 years old. Oh, so he's young. And and no, when I when I got out, and so I tr- I was in his, I got in his life. Uh, his mom left him at a uh, tweaker's house. Shut up. And just left him there. What? And yeah, at her friend's house, there was a tweaker. And he was like, hey, my mom just left. And she just took, and she left all her kids and shit. Some crazy shit, right? And Does she use? Yeah. she's. I think she's still, uh, my, my son calls it boofed. Boofing, when you're boofing, when you're tweaking, you know? <laughs> he calls it, he's, yeah, she's boofed out. But anyways, um, she uh, she left him at a tweaker's house. So I went to pick them up. And you know what I mean? And I said, hey, yeah. bro. You gonna live with me? You good, big dog? You know, I just ask you to just keep it real. Don't ever lie to me and shit. You can talk to me straight. You know? Yeah. And uh, I mean, since the, so since then until now, um, we we've we've been just trying to figure shit out. You know, it's it's he's he's he is my son. Yeah. So he does have a lot of me in him, which is not the easiest to deal with. <laughs> You know, and I know yeah. that for a fact, especially when I was his age, you couldn't deal with me. You know, I was just fucking I was I I had a I had a, a, a similar situation, not too too similar, but I was raised in an abusive, very abusive home. Yeah. And um, split family. And it was just fucked up, you know. But so I, I can like I don't like, bro, like, yeah, I you know, get you, it. You Like, I get it. You're speaking to the choir, my G, like, but I'm yeah. here now. Was cracking just like, but anyways, we were working it out. Like this weekend, we're gonna spend the weekend together. That's dope. You know, we're gonna we're going out for the weekend, and yeah. So I love my son. He's just he's just a fucking. Tough it's just dude hard, to do. but he's a good guy. He's he's got a lot of heart, man. He's got a lot of heart. He's a really really good dude. You know, and, and when it comes to trauma, I think it, it's it's so hard. It's so hard, especially like you know. I think it's kind of comedy how I see like ex-gang members and like shit like that they're like telling the youngsters like don't do this life yeah da, da, da. but they do it anyways and it's like it's so hard to get through to someone that's younger when you've already been through this shit and you don't want them to go through the same shit you did but then it's like it's so hard to get that through their skull yeah it's so hard and i think and especially with my job you know i think that's the hardest thing is like getting them to understand that like you're not going to be a vic- like you're not going to be entitled in a victim forever. Like you're going to turn 18 and the system's going to say fuck you. I don't give a fuck about you and you're going to go to the curb and when you're crying your sob story to someone, the world doesn't give a fuck that you were abused. The world doesn't give a fuck that your dad raped you. The world doesn't give a fuck that your mom sold you on the streets. They want their rent. They don't give a fuck about your sob story. You know, and it's so hard to let people know that. And I think that's what I struggle with because, you know, I work at a facility. Um, I don't want to say the specifics because I don't want to get fired, but no. I work or, at a facility. If you do say the facility, all the dudes in the village will be like, God, I'm going to get on that five some. <laughs> I know. Um, but I work at a facility that, you know, supports uh, pregnant and parenting teens. And um, it's so difficult because... You know, as someone that has grew up in the DCFS system, you know, the system is it's a very political game and people don't realize that it's it's a broken system. It's very systematic. And the system is built for you to be oppressed. It's not there. You know, the system, the ideology that people have is like, oh, the system's so good. It gives you a step forward. It gives you an upper hand in life. But no, the system is built for you to be oppressed, to be a cycle it breaks you down because they don't give you any knowledge they don't how they don't hold any kid accountable and if you don't have consequences you're not held accountable for your actions you're never going to succeed in life because you're not going to understand that you can fucking you can't fucking break windows in the real world because you'll fucking go to jail i mean for so many years i, I felt like as a kid i felt so like I, I felt so i was just so like i felt sorry for myself Mm-hmm. You know, and and that's the wrong mentality. There's certain cats that have been through some ugly childhoods and shit, and and they 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 put the pain upon themselves, and the reaction of that is committing crimes, getting to the gangs, uh, yeah. abusing drugs, 
um, just uh, if you're a female, maybe not respecting your body. Yeah, you know? selling yourself, C sex, well, yeah. uh, uh, sex trafficking, and prostitution. Exactly. You know, so. But then there's other people that are built differently. They're wired differently. Maybe they're just a little smarter genetically, you know, and they're like, you know what? I'm going to use all this negative and turn it into some positive And that energy. was me. That I was, was like, I would be, I will fucking be damned if I'm a fucking suck a dick with a condom for 80 bucks a pop. You got to be fucked up. I mean, is that the ongoing rate? Yeah. You know, you know, what's crazy is so where I work at, right? We get a bunch of, it's called C-Sec girls. I'm not going to say no names. You can't fire me for that. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I was in the system, but I never, I never prostituted myself. And, you know, and a lot of girls that I work with prostitute themselves, you know, in Alameda, you know, we're right about, right about um, downtown LA. So I was actually on a walk with two of my girls and um, they were talking about it. And, you know, cause one of our girls, you know, with her pimp, like he came and like caused a lot of commotion. So there was like a whole, investigation going on but um i was telling them like yo like i know this may be an ignorant question but like what's up like how does this shit work and she was like what you mean miss i'm like how like like i don't understand she's like well basically you know like suck a dick with a condom on she's like these bitches these dirty bitches be fucking up our money because bit like bitches like me will suck a dude's dick with a condom on 10 minutes tops with a with a condom and you better fucking get your nut and that's 80 bucks a pop. But then you have bitches out here that'll suck a nigga's dick, you know, for 40 bucks. No condom. That's a good deal right there. And I'm like, wait, what? Let me get the $40 Hold deal. Up. Let me get the $40 deal with the I'm two like, tacos. I'm like, wait, what? You know, so then she was telling me like, yeah, and, the, and I'll let them fuck me with a condom on for 10 minutes for 150. So then in my mind, I'm like, wait. There's 60 minutes in an hour. You times that by 100 and six times 150, bitch. You're making like, I'm bad at math, but like what's close to $700 an hour. So if you fucking for like three hours straight, bitch, you make it more than me on a good day. Yeah. You only got to work one day out the week. Like, yo, what? Yeah. You know? So then I'm like, damn, why was it like, I'm out here fucking, fucking, fucking for free. <laughs> Hold the fuck up. Like I'm out here giving my pussy away for free when I could be making like a G a day? Hold up. I'm in the wrong business. Like, I'm out here working hard, fucking getting punched in the face, getting called a stupid bitch, a fucking idiot, you know, fucking glass thrown at me for a rack every two weeks? Hold the fuck up. I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> I don't understand. Fucking calculator. <laughs> like, you know, and, it, and it's shit like that where you know, you get these girls and these dudes that come. So the, I think the misconception also is that when you're so for most people that go into DCFS, right? Parents aren't negligent, which then causes those youth to grow up quicker, right? To be responsible, to be independent, whether them be only child or siblings, they have to be independent, right? So then you get taken away from this home, but you're already like nine, 10, whatever age, but you act like a fucking grown ass adult because you're taking care of your little sister because your mom's fucking hair went out and your little sister got to eat, right? Yeah. Then you get put into a placement and they're like, be 10 years old, play with Barbie. And then you're like, did my sister fucking eat? Like, I got to go change my little sister's diaper, you know? So there's two different um, personas of like being a child and being an adult that are constantly conflicting with each other, with, conflicting with each other and then they wonder why girls that are like 10 11 12 are you know on top of that they have daddy issues on top of that they're getting a seven dollar well i think right now we're at like fucking if you're like 16 you're getting about like 15 bucks a week for allowance so you're going you're getting placed into a place where you're getting 15 bucks for an allowance you're like what the fuck am i gonna do with 15 bucks so, but so when you're when you're in a foster home, they give you an allowance too. It's part of the contract. Yeah, allowance. so you get an allowance every week, regardless if you fucking do chores or not, which is ridiculous to me. Yeah, like, bitch, you didn't clean your room, you didn't dust the living room, you didn't clean your dishes. Why the fuck do you get an allowance? But that's a licensing rule. Like, regardless if you clean your fucking dish or not, you got to get that fifteen dollars and you got to sign for it. And legally, we have to say that we gave it to you. Damn. Which is crazy to me. Like, what? How is that teaching them anything? Yeah. Bitch, if you have a house, you better learn how to clean some dishes. We're going to have fucking roaches. Yeah. 
It's crazy. So there's so many different like rules and shit. Like it's it's crazy. And I think for myself, I, I feel like right now I'm getting in this um, transition phase in my life where I've seen it's like you're working for a system like I'm contributing to their failure. That's how I feel right now. I'm in a, in a, in a spot in my life where, you know, I've been through the system. I've been homeless. I've gone through shit. And, you know, I was in the system almost what I'm 26 now. And I aged out when I was fucking 18. So it's been eight years. It's almost been a decade, Yeah. you know, in the end and the system has changed so much. So before you should just be group homes. Now um, about a year ago, we switched over to STRTP, which is short term residential, intense therapy or some therapeutic program so basically it's before we transitioned to strtp you were able to be in a group home for long periods of time a year two years three years four years five years however if you're fucking 14 and you wanted to stay in that group home until you were 18 you could yeah. now with strtp you can only legally you're supposed to say six months which doesn't fucking happen you stay there longer than six months but the goal and the plan around that was you're gonna have six months of intense therapy to assess your trauma and then get you into a foster home right i want to meet the motherfucker that came up with this fucking plan because you have a bunch of fucking teenagers that don't want to fucking do therapy and you're not holding you're not holding them accountable for them breaking windows for ditching school, for running away, for fighting other youth in the system, for attacking staff, for getting high in the placement. So how do you expect them to transition and to learn consequences when you don't hold them accountable? Gotcha. Yeah. I I, want to know because it's it's a real life question, you know, and like I think back to myself when I was in a group home and I, you know, was telling my my like my mom, quote unquote, and I would tell her, like, you know, I'm not going to go to fucking school in the morning. And she would look at me and be like, you're not going to go to school. And I'm like, nah, don't fucking come in my room. Wake me up again. And I would go back to sleep. And, you know, an hour later, 30 minutes later, bam, bam, bam on my door. It's a fucking police. It's the school police and I get a fucking truancy ticket and God forbid I'm in my fucking PJs because however the fuck I'm wearing, that's how I'm going to school. Oh, shit. They take you straight. like Yeah, straight like that. Handcuff and you go to school and you get a truancy ticket that you have to fucking go on a Saturday to the fucking school to do detention at fucking eight o'clock in the morning. And if you didn't attend the fucking detention, your ass got another ticket. And let those tickets add up because your ass is going to get put on probation, you know, and and nowadays they don't do that, which is like insane to me because it's like that's what that truancy ticket and me being handcuffed and going to school in my fucking pajamas and my little crop top with my fucking ponza hanging out. I felt embarrassed. Hair not done, crusty eyeballs. I felt embarrassed. I never after that experience, I my ass was ready fucking 7 30 in the morning lesson learned let's go to school <laughs> let's go and now you know even for where i work like girls sleep all day you're tired i'm bored from what bitch you slept all day what the fuck are you bored from yeah you know it's crazy it's like how do we how do we move forward from that i mean i, I when it comes to systems nothing's perfect just like what we're going through right now, mm-hmm. you know, uh, with this, with the police departments. I mean, far from perfect. I mean, but at the same time, when they have, there's so many kids that are in the foster system and you have X amount of families that are willing to be foster parents, right? Mm-hmm. Is, is, is it a big business? Because it is a business, right? It's a, it's, big- it's a multi, the company, the company that I work for, right? It's a million dollar company. Which which brings which makes me so frustrated because a lot of people like to get you know like oh we're a nonprofit we're a nonprofit you're a nonprofit bitch you but it's like check. you get a million dollar donation a year but yet you give me shitty ass you give these girls shitty ass food and you give them the bare minimum yeah. so even especially with this COVID shit okay 
this COVID shit has been really interesting where I work. And it's like the CEO, the VP, the director is not fucking coming into work and you want to cut our hazard pay, but we can't fucking cut the CEO who's working at homes fucking, you know, uh, salary. Yeah. I'm confused. Levels. You know, and it's yeah. It's, no, it's, I mean, they're not they're not ta- they're obviously not taking care of their employees, right? yeah, as they should because yeah. employees is what keeps the fucking uh that that well oiled machine moving in the right direction. Exactly, and it's like you know, I had a, a conversation with one of my um with my one of my managers, and I I was telling her, you know, it, it, it's frustrating because I you know as it's frustrating because as someone that has been through the system. You know, I I would think that my input would be beneficial to someone that got a fucking my, master's degree in psych, but has never been through the system. And I'm not trying to discredit because all people go through struggles. I get that. Everybody goes through struggles. You don't have to be in the system to go through a struggle. But there's a difference between having your fucking tire broken and having to figure that out than being abused. They're two different struggles. So as somebody that has been through the system and tries to give advice, you know, they expect me to be more like, it's like, they just like, are like, uh, eh, it's okay. Uh, you're being too vocal. Uh, your input's not needed. And it's like, no, my input is needed because getting a master's degree and learning how to work in psych and then working in a facility are two completely different ball games. They don't teach you the shit that you go through or that you're going to have to endure when you go and you work in DCFS. You know, like I have, I just graduated. I got my AA in psych. Everything that I learned about trauma and, you know, fucking life expectancy does not align with my job because I get mentally abused every fucking day. I come into work and I'm like, fuck. I hope so-and-so is having a good day because I hope that I don't get a book thrown at me. I hope that I'm not called a stupid bitch today. So do you you work (laughs) directly now with uh, DCF? What is it? So I work with a facility that houses DCFS and probation girls that are pregnant or parenting. Okay. So we get girls that are from uh, 12 years old and they can stay with us until their 19th birthday. Is is this a placement? It's a facility. It's a facility, kind of like a placement, huh? Yeah, I mean, I mean, placement is just like wherever you're placed, but we're like an actual, like we're a lockdown facility. Yeah, well, no, I mean, because there's placements, there's uh, uh, there's different placements in the juvenile system that uh, kids get thrown into, like say so, but they call them placements, like in juvenile hall and shit like that. They call them placements. Yeah. Who, who am I to tell you what the fuck they call it? You know I mean, mean, placements are just wherever you're housed. Okay, for sure. But the the but when I know when I hear of placements, I hear of like yeah, lockdown facilities that are yeah. that are housed. You know I mean? Yeah. So I work in a lockdown facility. Okay. You know, and it's 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 crazy. Like we have a bunch of girls that you know, our, our fuck, I'm not, I was going to say my our philosophy, but then I was like, fuck, you're going to know where I work. But basically our objective is to pretty much get these girls to be able to um, self, you know, obtain themselves, take care of their child, take care, take care of their children. Some of them have multiple kids, you know? So our goal is to get them out of the system, have a job, have per- permanent housing, have them, you know, get an upper hand in life. But I feel like all we do is enable them. And the worst combination you can have is a girl that feels entitled and like a victim. That's the worst combo. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of them that are in that situation, even though some of them maybe did a little bit to themselves, you know, but I I can see the, the, the mind. The, the mind thought would be like that, you know, like, hey, man, I'm a fucking victim. I'm here. Nobody loves me. You know, and they just feel down on themselves. You know, they feel bad about life. They feel worthless, you know? Mm-hmm. I know. I mean, I've, I've felt like that in the past. I was never put in a placement or anything like that, but I was just on the fucking streets and shit. And I felt at times that I wasn't like, I wasn't shit, you know, and maybe that was my bad. You know what I mean? I mean, I wasn't taught. No, I wasn't in a, a structured environment. Like you said, like, yeah, in structured environments, we should be teaching them differently. Like, yeah. no, like this like, is- Like, no, you, don't you, feel like this. Yeah, you got the mind, you got the wrong fucking uh, uh, thought process. That's yeah. not how you, if you feel like that, you're going to continue feeling like that for into your entire fucking life and you ain't going to fucking accomplish nothing. We need to correct the fucking thought process. Exactly. Yeah. And- and it's like as a as 
DCFS as a platform, you know, the, the main goal, regardless, whatever tra traumatic, you know, trauma you've experienced, the platform for DCFS is to heal, is to heal and to recover and to allow these youth to become adults and to contribute back into, into society and to just be better and to overcome that trauma. 100%. But yeah. the statistics are, are bad. 3% of former foster youth graduated with a degree. That's fucking horrible. You got a good question right here. Uh, let me let me let me ask you just because I it caught my eye real quick. Um, okay, go ahead. Hold on, let me find it real quick. It says uh bop, 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 bop. um uh yeah, shout out to Ed. Shout out to Ed. Um Ed is asking what were your thoughts on the Gabriel story? And just real quick before you answer that, if you can answer that. So that's on Netflix, right? Yeah, I watched okay. that. Okay, so peep game. Uh, so why did I, you ask that? So I have a house. I have a house full of. I have a house full of girls. My my house is full of girls, right? Yeah. You know, and uh, two of them are going to be uh, four and five. You know, so sometimes the, to watch certain things, I you know, especially like that, I, I it's different. I no, I can't. I can't watch that in front of them. Yeah. So so there was a time that I was able to watch it, and I clicked on it on Netflix, uh -huh. and um, and I couldn't watch it. I turned it off. You didn't. You didn't watch the whole thing. Nah, nah I just. I, I watched. I, I, I watched. I, I, the whole I started thing. it, and I said, "You know what? This shit right here is 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 bad for my like." I I don't mean to sound like some sensitive ass motherfucker. No, but, but it is I, I I I really didn't want to put that into because I was I already caught the gist of it. Yeah. Right. I, I you know I watched the it's news. I watched some of the shit on YouTube because there's a lot of coverage on the news on YouTube about the the dude. I mean, I, I watched some of the uh, the court shit, whatever the fuck they had on YouTube. Yeah. And, and, and so I knew the gist of it. And then when I pressed play on it and, and it started off, I said, "Oh hell no, I can't put that in my What's system." What's the last right episode? You Honestly, watched? I felt no. I I didn't. I didn't get you. Didn't to even give it to the first. Episode? I didn't get to the first episode, and I don't sound like I don't want to sound like a little bitch about it. But no, I just it's I, not I, even I, that, I, honestly I, I I wanted the the night that I did that i had something to do the next day and 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 this may sound like some punk ass shit you know what i mean but i felt like if i watched that that the shit was gonna fucking disturb my fucking it, sleep it, it will it was gonna disturb my sleep and i wasn't gonna be able to sleep that night because i was gonna be fixated because i get fixated on shit yeah, you know what i mean like you, you, you see this shit right here right here i got fixated on the setup right here yeah you know and i didn't know none of this shit but i got fixated and i found out how to do it so when things uh interest me and i get it on 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 youtube or something i will go a hundred percent down that rabbit hole no I will be I like, feel you. i'll be like oh shit okay bye bye, yeah. bye bye and i'll type it again and i'll get more information about it so i felt like that shit was really gonna fuck me up and that night i didn't want to fucking have that on my mind the whole night I didn't watch it. No, it was sad. What are your thoughts? But you know what? I think, but the fact that it disturbed for you as a man with kids, we have, you have three girls, right? And yes. a boy. So as you with a, a man with kids, like it should disturb you because he's a child. Yeah. Like I don't have kids. I mean, he was kept in a box, you know, and, 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 and that's, that's, I feel like the Gabriel Fernandez story was such a powerful thing because there's so much shit that happens behind the scenes in DCFS that people don't know about. And mind you, all of everybody that works, your tax dollars funds DCFS. I mean, whose fault was that? It, you know what? There was, I did, think. Did DCF, who's, no, who's a the lot case of, there was on a, that? There was a lot of people that dropped the ball. The emergency social worker dropped the ball. The case manager dropped the ball. The fucking teacher dropped the ball. If I'm because a, they if, all seen signs. Because they all seen signs. If I am a preschool teacher, okay, I, me as a, I'm, my title is a residential counselor. That's my title where I work. I signed a paper. I went through a fucking damn near six hour. I'm sorry if I'm cursing a lot, but this shit gets me hot. It's all good. You were just talking like, about five cents. Um, <laughs> sorry. You ahead. know, like I took a six hour child abuse training i got certified in that i am a mandated reporter on the field and off the field but so are the people that were uh, exactly and that's my point so i don't give a damn if i'm at chuck e cheese with my niece and i see bruises on a kid's fist face i'm reporting that because i am a mandated reporter on and off the field the issue is which i've seen where i work is a lot of times there are hotline calls that are made 
and they don't take it as a priority. So you can call and say, hey, you know, I just want to report that so-and-so was, you know, I, I witnessed this person being hit. I witnessed this person being choked. I saw bruises. You know, I don't know the, I, I'm not a professional, so I don't know the criteria on when they take it serious. But if I was a preschool teacher and I saw fucking cigarette burns on a child, I don't give a damn. That child's not leaving my classroom. That child was not leaving my classroom until I know that they have a safe place to go. Yeah. You drop the fucking ball, you know, and it's incidents like it's incidents like this that continue to happen over and over again. And the issue that I've seen with DCFS is people like to push the li- people like to push liability, right? So let's say I have a kid, right, and I know they're going to be in a di- in, in a dangerous situation. I'm going to get the clearance for this child to fucking go somewhere else. So then the liability is shifted to someone else. And it's, oh, I don't know. My hands are clean. Yeah. This person was under this person's care. And I feel like with the Gabriel Fernandez story, the liability was just shifted between the social worker to the emergency social worker to the school the game, huh? to the school teacher to to this, this, this. And it's like, no, all of you contribute to this. Even the fucking cops. Yeah. That's crazy to me. You went into this household and you saw this kid with actual fucking bruises, burn marks. Like even the pictures that they showed in, in in the show, like any normal person would have known this kid is being abused and you did nothing. Yeah. And it's people like that where I'm like, how the fuck do you sleep at night? Yeah. And this is where I tell you, like I'm getting in the point in my life where I'm in this transition of I'm contributing to these individuals failures. You're, you're kind of like, like, like what am who am I as a person? How yeah. do and maybe and maybe it is my guilt of, but then it's like I I don't have power here. I'm just a residential counselor. I can only counsel these girls. I'm not the director. I'm not the VP. I'm not the CEO. So I'm just following directions from my supervisor, and that kills me every day because I know as somebody that grew up in the system that got a slap on the wrist when I put somebody in the hospital with a fucking concussion. And it was, oh, it's okay. Elvira's been through trauma. We're going to give her a slap on the wrist. I never got a consequence for that, for all those little things. And then when I became 18 and I went to a transitional housing program and I got kicked out for having multiple parties and I got in a fight with somebody and ended up going to jail, then reality sit. When I was in a jail cell, like, fuck. I have an assault and battery charge. Yeah. Why did it take me this long to understand that my actions have a fucking consequence when nobody in the world cares about me having a heroin addict mother? Why does it take that much time for you to understand that? Why does it take that much time for you to learn that as a lesson when DCFS's platform is to better you as a youth? It's to better you as a kid. It's to give you structure. It's to teach you these things but it doesn't happen so so what's crazy about what you're telling me right now is obviously the system is broken yeah it's a broken system and now you are a part of this system yeah it's crazy and so that's the guilt you talk about and i think and, and i know that like i have a lot I have a lot of guilt. And, and I think when, it's and when you talk shit and you say your thing, they don't even hear you, huh? I think they they expect me to tolerate their bullshit. Yeah. More because of because I'm a person that has been in the system, they expect me to tolerate their bullshit. Like you understand. And it's like, no, but the whole purpose of and I'm not saying that every person that had that works in DCFS is a bad person because they're not. I've met a lot of coworkers or something catching your eye. No, let me let me read this real quick. Hold on. Okay, quick. go ahead. I, I can't I, see. No, it. I got I got a couple cats talking shit. I'm just kind of like I'm I'm hearing you, but um, let's see. <laughs> what does it say? I can't see. I'm fucking blind. This dude, I'm gonna show you a comment, bro. I mean, because it's telling me to fucking uh, not show it. It says, uh, "Little Mark is saying uh, those fingernails." Would be great to pick my nose, but I'm going to have to dip. 
but I'm going to have a difficult time wiping my ass. My nails? <laughs> I don't even know. My nails? <laughs> Oh my god. They're cute. What do you mean? I don't understand. They're sixty dollars a pop. What's good? He wants them? You know, I, in, in- No, I mean he might be, <laughs> I I don't know what he's saying, but I mean it'd be good to pick the nose, but not don't, stick a finger in the ass. You don't like a little pain? God, I didn't know we, I didn't know we were dealing with pussies on the show. <laughs> Homie said, Don't mind me, I'm getting faded. Shout out to little Mark. <laughs> Order a mask, my G. www.50rags.com. Support the movement, my boy. I appreciate your comments, though. They're funny as fuck, dog. I mean, shout out to everybody on the fucking uh, chat line and shit. I can't see. I wish I could read them, but, like, I can't see it, even though I have my glasses on. Uh, let her check my oil. <laughs> Did you say you need to check his oil? Fried uh, eggs dirt uh, said, I'll let her check my oil. We're going to slide you that what's fucking. Un- what's under that hood? What's under the hood? <laughs> I need a preview. Send a picture to my DM. <laughs> Make sure you shave. Why are bushes out of the game? <laughs> what are dudes got a big old bush. You know, I only like hair on the chest. That's it. And beards. If you have, if you have a beard, you're rock solid. Shout out to the in dude, my book. Shout out to the dudes that got the fucking baddest <laughs> beards, but they ain't got a fucking one hair in their head. <laughs> you, I like bald dudes. Yeah. I'm all, especially, well, especially a bald dude that has like hella head tats. Ooh, if you have your eyes tatted, fuck. I know you're banging the fuck out of me. Like, eye tats is like, ugh. <laughs> is I, I know it's going to be a good time. <laughs> his eyelids say nighty night, motherfucker. <laughs> Put this pussy to sleep, boy. <laughs> nighty night. Oh, you asked for this. <laughs> what, did, what did the homie say? Somebody said, oh, Andrew Martinez said, lucky, fuck the haters. I mean, I don't even know what motherfuckers are. Are fools hating right now? If they're know. hating, that means you're doing something right, buddy. No, it's all good. Huh? She funny. She fucking funny. <laughs> um, San Bernardino says, ha ha, she wants uh, Lucky's people. <laughs> just cut it out, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, the mothers are just clowning. We're just having a good time and shit. You know what yeah, I mean? We're at just the, talking and bullshitting. And at the same time, you know what I mean? We're we're hearing her story, which is um, I mean, it's, it's an amazing story. We we have so many homies on here that tell their fucking trials and tribulations, and it's almost a breath of fresh air to have this fucking Afro Latina right now on the platform, um, sharing her shit and and the and the, the positive side of this, the positive message is yeah she might be a part of a broken system but she you know i mean you're trying to do better with it right yeah i am i mean like like i said like i've gone through i've gone through like a lot of crazy shit in my life and i i as crazy as it sounds i feel like i am humbly blessed that i was taken away from my mom so you look at it as a blessing. I think it's it was the biggest blessing because I think back, mind you, my mom was on Section 8. I fucking was born in West Covina, grew up in Monrovia, you know, in Dewarty. So it's a super small town. If anybody knows about Dewarty, it's super gang affiliated. Monrovia is gang affiliated, especially in the 90s. I was born in 94. And, um, you know, I feel like, you know, my mom was on Section 8. She didn't have a lot, you know, and... I feel like if I would have stayed with my mom, I would have ended up either on drugs or pregnant with a hell of a lot of kids. And so, uh, I mean, are you going to ever have any kids? Do you want to have kids? You want to nourish them? You want to love them? You want to show them a different life? Uh, for me, kids, it's just a, t- it's a lot. I don't know. You don't want to deal with it. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, for myself, I'm super pro- pro-choice. Super, super pro-choice. Um, you know, I've gone through some shit. Um, what is poor choice? You have mean? the choice to keep your baby or not. Okay. And when this, uh, this time and age we're in, they're trying to shut down abortion clinics and stuff, right? Yeah. And honestly, for me, I feel like <sighs> we're going to get super deep and intimate, but like, I feel like it's a choice. And like for myself in 2016, I had an abortion and yeah. I feel like at that time it was just a fucked up situation. And I feel like I wasn't ready for a kid and I, and maybe I was selfish, you know, I was in fucking college at that time, you know, like doing good. I was running a room and I just, I think my biggest decision on having an abortion was I wasn't fit to have a, to have a baby at that time. 
Granted. How, how long ago was this, if you don't mind me asking? 2016. 2016. So four years ago. Four years ago. So you're 26. You were like 22. Yeah. Yeah. And did you, I mean, did you know, you know, did you know who you're pregnant from? Yeah. Was it a Mexican dude? Yeah. So you're going to have yourself a little Rudy. It might be Carlos. What would you name your son? Well, if you had a son, he's a Mexican, you know, Afro Latina like you, right? You know what I mean? Mixed, <laughs> you know, mutt, whatever you want to call it, you know, uh, which I am too. I'm a mutt too, you know? Yeah. But what, what would you name your kid? What, what kind of name would you get? You know, it's funny because um, I already know, like, I have my kid's name picked out. It's what's, funny. what's the name? Let's hear it. Marcellus. Marcellus is a dope name. I, a dope name. I like Marcellus. Marcellus is kind of like a, um, I, well, I know one dude named Marcellus, and he's an ESPN commentator. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's a black dude. Is it a black name? Is Marcellus a black name? I don't know. You know what? It's super, like, I'm, I like, like, Queen of the Dam. I'm super into, like, vampire shit. So Marcellus comes, it's, it's one of those. Well, you know the next question. <laughs> you ever suck any blood? <laughs> you know, that's an, that's another topic for another time. <laughs> Is that right? Oh, we got a real vampire right here. No, but um, yeah, like I'm super pro-choice and I, I feel like, you know, at the time I, I just wasn't, I didn't feel ready. I feel like the person that um, was in the situation, <sighs> like they had their own shit going on. I feel like it was too complicated at the time yeah. to have to bring in a baby and um you know we mutually agreed on the situation and you know we took care of it and i think i think that was an eye-opening experience for me and i think it it was it like i would never have an abortion again yeah you know like that you know even it still fucks with me to this day you know and i feel like it, it was a hard thing to do i just never wanted to put to bring a child into this world to suffer and to struggle with me. And shout out to all my independent single moms because, you know, my best friend has a daughter. She's a single parent, doesn't have, you know, the baby daddy in the picture. And she's an amazing mom. Hey, I want to give a shout out to my homeboy, Smiley. What up, my G? He's always fucking with me. <laughs> and I want to I want to give a shout out, a big shout out to my boy, Jeff Echo. Jeff Echo tapped in a minute ago. What's up, what's up? I, see, I seen your post. Uh, 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 I seen your uh, message right there, my G. I love you, dog. And uh, so, you know, Jeff Echo, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, are you good with him? Like, Yeah, you know? he's cool. I actually met him. Crazy story. Uh, my ex-boyfriend. Um, I don't know if you've known Jeff when he had like the Echo's World, the downtown LA arts district fucking space. What was that? Like about five years ago or something like that? A long time ago. Okay. It was like, yeah. So I had met him because my ex at the time, he, well, he's still an audio engineer. So he's like in the music industry. Um. At that time, he was like up and like he's way bigger now than he was back in the day. But um, at the time, he was still like super underground, like, you know, working for free and shit. And he had saw that he was running out of space. Yeah. So at the time, you know me, I was like, I'm your little assistant. <laughs> you know, so at the time, like I would book all my ma all my ex's shit. Like I would make sure all his appointments are straight. Okay. You know, I was I was like the middle person. Like, hey, babe, this is your your fucking appointment for this, 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 this is your studio. Da da da. And at the time when I was living in West Covina, he we had a two bedroom, so he would record out of our second bedroom. You know, so then um, he had saw some some ad that he was like running out of space and he was like, yo, babe, like, that's dope. Go check it out for me. So I met up Jeff at the arts district and I was like, oh, this is a dupe. Like, it was a dope ass spot. And I was like, yeah, babe, like, this is the real deal, blah, 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 blah. Needless to say, he didn't end up running from him. But I always just like kept following him like on social media and yeah. like. Just checking in once in a while. He's a real humble dude. Super, super cool. I mean, he re he referred um, you to me. Yeah, because I... It's funny because... Because he knew your story. Yeah, so a little bit after um, me checking out the rental space, I had met up with him because I was like, yo, like, that's why I, like, laugh about your podcast shit because I'm just not consistent. And, like, uh, when I met Jeff, I was just like, yo, like... I really want to do like a podcast or I want to do a documentary series like on foster youth, yeah. you know, and like the, and I want to do like the ugly shit, like the youth that end up homeless, the youth that end up on drugs, the youth that end up dead. Like I want to show the negative and the positive side on YouTube. And he was like, yo, like that's crazy, you know? And I kind of told him a little bit about my background, you know, and shit like that. And I, and he was like, yeah, dude, like I'll support you. Like, let me know. And he gave me his fees and shit. And, I just dropped the ball. Yeah. And, but I mean, we've been friends like, you know, via social media and stuff. And he's a really cool dude and he's always supported like what I'm doing. I just, 
I'm just not consistent. I hear you. And he, I mean, and, 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 and <laughs> as, as being, uh, you know, in contact via social media and shit, I mean, he still is, uh, has you on his mind. Yeah, he's to, super to, dope. To, to push uh, you my way. You know? Yeah. He wants to see you succeed. He wants, you know, he wants you to tell your story, you know, so he, so that's dope. Yeah, that's he's dope. a really dope person. Shout out to Jeff. Shout Echo. out to Jeff, because he's a super dope person. Super, and again, super humble, like super, super humble. So that that's super crazy. But yeah, because he, he hit me up and told me about it. And I was like, well, yeah, fuck it. Like, I feel like this is a good platform for me to get my story out there. And I mean, it's just, so, I don't know. I'm such a perfectionist and I like things to be a certain way. Yeah. And I just, you know, and, and then too, it goes back to like, like I'm still broke, you yeah. know? And it's hard for me to invest all this time. Like I'm the type of person where I'm like, if I'm gonna put out a documentary series, I want it to be top notch. I want it to be like crazy uh -huh. dope editing, crazy good story, because I feel like within the first 30 to 60 seconds of a show, it's either you're interested or you're not. If you don't grab the consumer's attention in that first 30 to second, 30 to second, 30 to 60 seconds, like it's a wrap. Yeah. I mean, especially all the content that's out there. Most yeah. of us can easily just fucking click over to the next fucking uh, documentary, Video. movie, yeah. whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, for sure. So that's why it's like taking me such a long time. And then too, like I'm fucking broke. Yeah. Like I'm always in my bag, you know, like I've been independent since I was 18. So, you know, me paying, paying rent, fucking electricity, gas, food is not cheap, you know? So it's like, I don't have like, you know, 600 to a thousand dollars to invest in a camera. And then sit home and edit when I'm taking fucking 16 unit, 16 units and working a 4590 schedule. Like I just don't have the time. Like in a in what a is, perfect what is, what is a 4590 schedule? So I pretty much work um I work nine hour days, uh two Wednesday through Saturday, and then I flex in and out every other Tuesday. So it's a 4590. You flex in and out every Tuesday. So uh one Tuesday you'll go in, next Tuesday you won't. Yeah. Okay. So I work five days a week every other every other week, but I work nine hour shifts. Yeah. I I, I once I worked a shift, it was a four tens and I love that shift, man. Cause I was yeah. like, damn, I get three days off on the week yeah. instead of and two. And you know what? Honestly, I feel like I feel like the weeks that I don't go in on a Tuesday, I'm like, fuck yes. Hell yeah. Because that that extra day. It really gives you the time to like regroup yourself, especially working where working where I work. You know, it's there's a lot of dynamics, the dynamics of, you know, and sometimes, you know, it's crazy because a lot of people always and this is a common theme with um, coworkers that I've talked to. It's like it's not even the girls that I don't want to see when I go to work. It's my coworkers. Yeah. Yeah, and I it's mean, like it's, it, gets, fuck. it gets catty and shit. I man. thought we were fucking adults here. Like, how are you worse than the girls? And they got trauma. They got some real shit going on. You know, like, yeah. you know, and sometimes I'm just like, yo, like I thought we were all adults here. I'm confused. So all the shit you've been through in life, right? All the shit you've been through in life. Let's talk about the flip side. Because the the shit you've been through in life has been, a, you know, it's been a lot of trauma. It's been a lot of heartache. It's, I mean, you've, um, you probably had, um more than most of us uh, shares as being a female that you cried at night, right? You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, you just, you, you, I mean, these, these life things that you've been through has been just a constant thing in your head with sometimes clouds, everything out the fucking picture and you're just concentrated on fucking like, God damn it, what the fuck is going on now? Or what the fuck is this? Or she's not even my fucking mom. That's not my dad, you know? Um, you, you, I mean, you have a lot more going in on in, in on your head than a, a regular female that had a mom and dad, you know, as their actual uh, uh, sperm givers or whatever you want to call it. I'm sorry, uh, excuse my fucking shit, but yeah. um, I mean, you had a lot more on your mind. You've been through so much fucking shit, man. You know, what I mean, and I commend you for getting through that and getting to the place where you're at, you know, and 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 you know, turning a fucking negative into a positive, man, I 100% commend you on that shit. And I'm glad that I, we had you on um, to tell your story. But wh what are the, the flip side? What makes you happy? You know? Like in life? In life. What makes you happy? Like, you know, yeah, you, you said, you know, the money is funny sometimes. It's hard to get through it. I'm broke still. Woo, woo, woo. But I mean, I've been, I've been in fucking situations where everybody was broke. Yeah. But we found a way to fucking just like, you know what? We're going to make the best of this shit. I mean, like there's always certain things that make you happy. And like, what makes you happy? You know, what do you like? 
You know, honestly, I don't know. I feel like you've met me in a time where, like I said, like, I'm just finding myself. Like, I feel like things, you know, honestly, it's crazy because lately I've been having a lot of anxiety with death. You know, thinking it about you. it's, you know, I'm going to die next year. Don't say that. No, I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> like, no, because I've, I've had it. I've had. A, so check it out real quick. No joke about it. Um, so my little sister died of cancer. She was a year younger than me. Mm -hmm. She died from that uh, fucking seven years, eight years ago. Right. I was in the pen. It was the hardest thing that I ever dealt with being in the pen and, and knowing that she was on her deathbed. You know, cause she was the closest one to, to my family. Yeah. Um, I just lost my train of thought a little bit. What were no, we talking about? Okay. Yeah, talking I about death. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so anyways, and then being from a neighborhood, I was I'm from a, I'm from a hood, right? And um and the hood that I was from, you know, a lot of homies. You yeah, know, you die young. Yeah, they die young. Yeah, you know? that's just how they, it goes. They die young, so so death is always like you know what I mean Le like lurking when, yeah, around the corner. Yeah, when when it's yeah. been around you a lot and shit, you I mean you think about it more than you should, you know. And so I would have anxiety. I was like, you know. Like my sister had cancer, so something's wrong with me, or, or say some shit. You know, what I mean, I already felt like that when I was living the gang life. But then after that, you know, what I mean, I always felt like there was something wrong. With me. Maybe I got cancer. You know, yeah. Maybe you just I ain't get gonna, super paranoid. Maybe, maybe I ain't gonna fucking make it till next year. And uh, even in my head, like I was always thinking, like I'm not gonna make it till I'm 40 years old. I'm 43 years old now. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm just saying though, like uh, it's always been in my head, and it's given me anxiety. You know, to a point where you know I'll be, I'll be I mean, I mean, I'll be transparent about this shit. You know, what I mean that I had to take. Um, some light medication yeah. to help me with my anxiety. You no, know, it's, it's like anxiety, I, I, some real shit. Like honestly, like um, let's be real about this shit. No, be yeah, be hundred. I mean, I'm not like I'm not a fucking like like I got a gang of imperfections. You know, yeah. Like I fucking I I I deal with a lot of shit inside my head, and it's been hard to transition to a certain lifestyle to being a dad and and being a responsible parent and taking care of and thinking about everybody else first besides me you know yeah. even though sometimes i i might do that but i'm just saying like it, i mean it was a lot of pressure and it gave me more anxiety you know what i mean because it's, so, a, it's so, a lot so i mean to this day like i see a psych yeah, i have a fucking therapist yeah i see it just <laughs> to like just to be like it's a check-in just to be like <laughs> every 90 days to be honest with you yeah i mean some of us might talk shit i mean i ain't the most sane person you know i see a psych to once in a while I'll just be like I'm good, fool. Yeah. See, see you in 90 days, big dog. Put that motherfucker prescription in, homie. No, but it, but it, you know, but it's a good thing because you acknowledge that. And the difference between you and somebody else that's out there that wants to talk shit is that we all, as human beings, we deal with shit. Yeah. And I, I've been seeing the same therapist for the past 10 years. Mind you, it's probably good for you, huh? And you know, does it help? You? It's it's good. It's good to vent to somebody. That doesn't know anybody that you know. And you can be good about that. And you can be like, you know, Martha is a fucking bitch. Every time I fucking come home, this bitch leaves her fucking shit on the fucking floor. And I don't understand why she doesn't put the shit in the hamper. It's driving me crazy. And just saying that <laughs> makes you feel better. He's, when, he see, when he sees you come in, he's like, man, all right, I'm going to see how many dicks <laughs> she sucked this month. Yeah. <laughs> I sucked makes, 10 dicks exactly. last month. <laughs> like, you know, and you. I'll just claim. No, but, it, no but it's serious. No, you're good, dog. Yeah. I have thick skin. But yeah. it's shit like that where you feel talking is therapy. It is. You venting. I need to talk shit out sometimes. No, you do. And even and sometimes you, and if it's you, with myself, you know And I mean? you go home and you're like, I feel better. But it shows that you're you're mature enough and you're responsible enough to check in with yourself and to make sure that you're at the best health that you can be at because you have other people relying on you. Hey, this is one of my favorite podcasts right here. And I ain't lying either. I ain't lying. We got this beautiful Afro-Latina right here. Hey, check it out. I, I, I see a question right here from uh, uh, Mashika. Mashika Ali. What the fuck does that shit say? What the fuck does that shit say? Where are you looking? Oh, Mashika, uh, Atlanta. I think it's Atlanta right there. Shout out to Atlanta if that's where you're from, my G. She, he said, can she cook, though? Yo, I get left. I get down in the kitchen. I'll, face, I'll FaceTime my homie right now. Let him tell you himself. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah. So I mean, what do you like? Cook? Let's make it real. I mean, you 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 you're you're Afro Latina. <laughs> we know your background. We know your your <laughs> na- I mean, we know your nationality. Yeah. But you, I mean, you had was the uh, Salvadorian family the yeah. longest you were with? Yes. You know what's funny is that um, you know, I I don't know if a lot of people. What the fuck are they called? Um, I don't know if you know. So I cook like soul food. Um, I'll fucking whip up some fucking fried chicken, collard greens, macaroni and cheese, all that, some fucking cornbread, all that. But then I could fucking make carne asada tacos and fucking steak and papas. Like, and then I'll switch to fucking waraches, you know? And I don't know if a lot of people know what that is in Salvadorian, but it's like, you know what waraches are? Come on now. Come on. You know? So like I can make so many different things. I love waraches. And you know, a lot of people don't know how to make that shit. What I just I love that shit. Love and people too. are like the shoes. I'm like, no, you fucking dumbass. I mean, I I, I don't order that all the time, but there's that a, shit is there, bomb. There's, there's a certain spot in my in my neighborhood on York Boulevard. You know the spot that uh <laughs> it's got some bomb ass what I just I mean you don't have to you don't have to peep me with that because yeah, I'm not to try it. Yeah. But yeah, like but, I, but, but uh, any place that and I and I don't want to sound funny about this shit, you know what I mean, but any place that says uh Mexican joints. That say Mexican and Salvadorian food. I will. I usually go for Mexican food, and I so I won't go there because I don't want the cross between Mexican and Salvadorian yeah. food. I don't want. I want. I don't want. I don't want the in between. You know what I mean? So I will eat, if I want Salvadorian food, I'm gonna go to a joint that that's, just hundred percent Salvadorian yeah. food. So I know you are on top. Of, I mean, I hope you're on top of your game. And I, I mean, not all Mexican joints are the bomb ass Mexican food. Not, it, it just is what it is. You gotta. You gotta find the mom and pop parts. So, but so you so you so you can you can cook some soul food. You can, I can you, cook anything, really. You know, I started. What's your go to? If say so, if you got this dude, he's been giving you the best dick ever. <laughs> he brought the cheesecake. He brought the flowers. He brought he man. He fucking he just fucked you up with all this shit when you were just wanting to fucking have a good time, yeah. right? You know, and 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 you're like, you know what? I'm gonna cook for this dude, and I want to impress this dude because he's doing everything right. What is your go to uh, uh, recipe? What are you gonna cook? Some steak steak okay i'll cook you know what i just tried this new recipe and i saute the steak with so you fucking throw butter in a a cast iron skillet i don't understand how people make steaks in like a regular pan yeah cast iron you gotta use a cast iron that's what my girl uses if not we gotta throw it on the grill exactly so you fucking get a cast iron you throw a bunch of butter in there once it starts foaming and key there's this this Jack Daniels steak seasoning. Oh shit! And I'm a I'm a my middle name is Jack. Have you seen? Have you tasted that? I shit? haven't tasted it. Okay, so but I see it sometimes, like bro, a weird now, shit. No, like, no. Okay, so go I mean, to the I'm, market. I, I fuck with baby rays. Exactly. And I fuck okay, with, so go to the market, get the Jack Daniels steak seasoning, get your cast iron skillet, fire that shit up, throw the butter in it, but throw the butter in it. Okay, once that shit's foaming, season your steak. With the fucking Jack Daniels seasoning, throw that shit on like ten minutes each side so it's seared. Preheat your oven to four fifty. Throw the steak in the oven for a couple minutes. While you're fucking oven cooking your steak, you're gonna fucking get some beef stock, some Worcester sauce, Worcester, okay, heavy milk, fucking um, onions, okay. You're going to make your sauce while your steak's fucking in the oven. But prior to this, you've already fucking made your mashed potatoes with your red with your red potatoes. Ooh, the soft ones. Yes. The creamy ones. Okay, you so you're you've already fucking And this is the trick. You get you cut up red potatoes. You throw them in the microwave. Cuz they get soft they get soft quicker. Okay. Okay. About 10 minutes, throw them in the microwave. Especially if you're like, I'm trying to eat and fuck. So this meal has to be cooked real quick. Throw them in the microwave, cut the potatoes, put them in a plastic bag, tie them up, throw them in 10 minutes, take them out, put them in a pot, mash them up, butter, garlic, milk, seasoning salt, because you know I like the extra seasonings. Mix that shit up. And then you're making your sauce. The last thing you do is cook your asparagus. Easy. Olive oil, garlic. Damn. That's his motherfucking meal. God damn it. I'm going to let that shit breathe for a minute. <laughs> and that's what you do. And you know, a lot I mean, of- you, you just didn't do like you could have, like, we got the bullshitter. We got the bullshitter. Uh, uh, what do you call it? The bullshitter. Like when someone's bullshit. Bullshit recipe. 
we, we know we we know when someone's bullshitting right here, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> and all those details you get, dude, you know how to cook a motherfucking steak. You know how to <laughs> co- get the mashed potatoes done quick. Right? Because right? I mean? you like, you know, hubby get off the fucking work at five o'clock. You just started cooking at five fifteen. You know he's about to be home in about six fifteen. If there's heavy traffic, you ain't got the time. That's an easy 20 minute meal. Bam. Walks in the door. Showers. Done. And so real quick, though, let's let me rewind it real quick. I, I'm going to I want to get a little bit of this recipe. Go ahead. Um, so you you put it you put it in the cast iron pan, mm-hmm. cast, cast iron pan. When it foams, you put the Jack Daniels seasoning salt in that. You sear it 10 minutes each side. And then after that, you preheat your oven. What do you put your oven to? I put my I put my oven to 450. You put your oven to 450. You put it in the oven. And what do you put? You said heavy milk. So you make your sauce. Okay, so I started a making- sauce for just a steak? Yes. Okay. So have you gone to the Cheesecake Factory? I haven't been there for a long time. So have you ever got their steak, Diane? No. Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, I'll do it now. <laughs> so go to, and I'm trying to get to the rare. I don't, I like my meat medium well. I haven't got to the rare yet because it's just fucking weird to me. It's I too chewy. And shit, it's, it is. Right? I feel like medium well is good because it's, it's, it's seared, but it's a little pink, but it's not too fucking raw where it's like dripping and it's freaking you out. Cause dog, this is a, this is a fucking animal. I don't, I, yeah, I don't like that. I mean, when I make carne asada, like, I want that shit. Like, when I see a burn crisp on that bitch, it's done. I'm like, ah, oh, game and then time. It, yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm not with, I, I don't fuck with the bloody shit. So I'm sorry if you like your shit rare. Eh, you're going to get your shit medium well for me. Yeah. I'll suck your dick good. Get over it. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, I started making this steak because. I love the steak and de- so they have a they have a combo it's steak and salmon mashed potatoes asparagus. This is the at Cheesecake Factory. What is this? You said the Daniel. What the is steak it? Steak Diane. Steak Diane. I'm sorry. So it's it's basically chopped up pieces of steak with the sauce and onions and mushrooms. And so that sauce is what you're talking about. So the sauce is just beef stock, heavy cream, Worcester sauce, and Dijon mustard. God damn it, that shit sounds bomb as fuck. So while your steak is in the oven, you're making your 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 sauce and you're fucking roasting your asparagus. So by time and your shot, your sauce shouldn't take any more between five minutes tops to make. That's with the boiling and all that shit. It's yeah. it's really quick. It's, it's a quick like mix. beef stock, fucking bring to a boil, throw in Dijon mustard, bring to a fucking boil, add a Add heavy cream, bring to boil. And then you throw it in the oven. And how long does it, that steak need to be in the oven in that? Five, six minutes tops. Damn. And then you take it out and it's juicy, baby. I'm so fucking hungry. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so the juicy. Guy, I'm hungry. Hey, you know what? Fucking juicy. Dude, I'm why about to, the, I'm about, why I'm the about fuck are steak so expensive right now? Yo, you know, I be getting, why is I be fucking getting, like, I go to Stater Brothers, get a beef chunk. Two of the motherfuckers, eight nineteen a pop. Yeah, 16 dude, bucks. They're fucking expensive right now, dude. I, I've been eating what fucking so ground. Good. I've been eating ground beef and chicken lately and shit. <laughs> you know what I mean, ground turkey, five ninety nine. But if you order one of these fucking uh, masks <laughs> right here at www.50racks.com and shit, maybe I'll buy myself a steak. For real, we need maybe to I'll a, buy we us a steak. steak. We need to get you a steak. Well done is best. Shout out to Andrew Martinez and shit. <laughs> Shout out to Ellie, Ellie Cruz. You would, uh, uh, you need a uh, cooking segment. Lucky, that would be dope. We're going to get that shit cracking with we spreads. We should. We'll make the steak for you. Yeah, that'd be dope. I'm gonna do a spread thing, a uh, prison spread. Uh, I seen that competition, you know? and there's a, so a lot of my boys right here. Hey, if you guys think so, there's there's a uh, there's a few people right here right now. Do you guys think I should do the spread competition I think live on this podcast? You should what do, do you guys it live. Think? It should be live. You know, I was in juvie. I've never been, I've never been to prison. <laughs> Or like, I've never been locked up after 18. Hey, good thing you weren't in prison because you would have been just mopping yeah. up all that pussy in there. I know, oh. like, <laughs> so I, I I, don't get the big hype on spread because I'm not going to lie. When I was in juvie, I felt like you've never been we with a dude in prison to make yeah, you a spread. I haven't. You know what? Check it out. We're going to have you on again. And next time you come, <laughs> I will make you a bomb spread. OK, you I want to try this. You know, my craziest thing that I've had is. I've had a couple of noodles with hot Cheetos in it. And it's bomb. But I f- that's not a spread, though. People it's are not like- a spread, but it's like... <laughs> it's, it's like the tiptoeing of it. <laughs> it's kind of it's like if, if, if the spread was a pond, 
If if making spreads was a pond and you got, you said a cup of noodles. Cup of noodles with hot Cheetos. With hot Cheetos in it. That means you just kind of like stuck your toe in that pond. Okay. You know what I mean? That's just. I haven't done a deep yet. You haven't yet. No, you haven't. haven't done the deep dive in the the river of uh, blackness. (laughs) Of spreads. Noodles. And and dude, there's just, you got to like, when you make a spread, you got to, the noodles got to be like, you can't over. Uh, uh, saturate the noodles with water because yeah. they're going to be super spongy. And I mean, there's a certain, it's, and, and, the, and then the hot exactly. water has got to be a certain temperature, you know? And I mean, like I've made spreads when I've been in the hole or, or crazy shit and I didn't have hot water, you know, I had to use cold water, you know? And when you use cold water, you got to leave that shit in for a long time. You're like, you put it in the bowl and you're like, all right, baby, it's morning time, but I'll see you at lunchtime. You're going to be blown <laughs> all the way up, ready and happy to see me to eat you, you know? But uh, uh, um, spreads, there's an art to making spreads. Is now, there? A, a lot of dudes think that, oh, I just need a noodle. I need some mayonnaise. I need some fucking uh, uh, whoopty whoop whoop. You know what I mean? Summer sausage, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I'm going to make a sausage? spread. Sausage? Hold up. I mean, nah, they got summer You're sausage. You're getting elite right now. You get sausage in your commissary? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, wow. sir. Yes. Yes, <laughs> woman. <laughs> yes, Ooh, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I'm just saying, making a spread, there's a lot of people that said, oh, there's nothing to it. But you know what? There is a lot to it. There, the, it, there is an art to making a prison spread, and dudes that have been in the prison system know this. Can so, I get? Can I get a hell yeah? How many motherfuckers know about this? Give me a fucking hell I yeah! If I'm speaking the fucking truth right now, you know what I mean? Like, I want to know the facts. You know, I, there's. I mean, I so I did. A little Mark said yes. Yeah, for sure. A little Mark. So what's up. what's like? Okay, so you know how you have like? Have you been to Bossa Nova? Boss, bu- 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 <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> so okay, no, so obviously there's, I haven't. <laughs> so there's the Olive Garden. There's a then there's the Cheesecake Factory, and then there's the Bossa Nova. Only bad bitches know about the Bossa Nova. Where the fuck's Bossa Nova? Now? I ain't never seen no Bossa Nova. It's is like that a restaurant? Or? Yeah, come on, come Drake on. said it. Come so on. what's the Bossa Nova of spreads? Like the elites, elite, elite, like top notch. This is the fucking. The fucking lobster and the steak. Like, this is not no fucking ham and cheese type shit. Yeah. What's 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 the boss of, of spreads? Okay. The elite. I mean, I guess I guess it depends on who you're talking to and what their preference is, because everybody has a preference. There's some dudes that like the fucking uh um, you know, they like the, the they like the chili bean spreads. There's some dudes that like the fucking uh uh uh, the tuna spreads or some dudes that like the the, the pork rinds and sometimes mm. what they do with the pork rind spreads you know what i mean uh they make chinese food you know what i mean you put the we used to have hot pots in the pan and shit you know what i mean and you put the fucking uh chicharrones in that bitch you know what i mean and you and they give you grape jelly you know what i mean so you put the grape jelly in that bitch and you marinate that shit you cook in it even though you're supposed to just you're not you're supposed to use it just for hot water you would you know what i mean and so there's so, i mean there's chinese spread. i i did i went to uh uh arizona for one night and i got huh. arrested out there there, and I stayed two years in the prison system. Now in Arizona, ADC, they have microwaves. You know what I mean? So, the, the, so the homies from AZ and the homies out there from from the south side out there and shit. The you know the homeland and shit. Um, they would teach me how to use the microwave because they had different ways of making spreads with microwaves. There, oh. There's there's one way they made a spread, and the way they made the spread is they made it with using a microwave. Is uh, they would make this bomb ass Chinese food. With the, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a quick ingredients. Whoa, I know I know I know I know we're drifting off a little bit, but let me tell you about uh, in, when I was in Arizona State Prison about how they would use this microwave, you know, uh-huh. and what they would do is they would so there's these buckets that you can get from uh, uh, the infirmary from medical. Uh, they're supposed to be for your fucking feet, like if you got bad athletes' feet. <laughs> but the dudes, that, the, but the dudes that get these buckets, they use it to make spreads. I mean, I hope they don't put their feet in that shit. But I've used many of them. Maybe so, there there has been feet in that motherfucker. You know what I mean? But anyways, um, they, they 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 put they put this sauce in the microwave, and the sauce is um, let me tell you what it is. It's um, iced tea. It's a big bucket of water with iced tea in it. Jalapenos, uh, top top ramen, ramen packets of seasoning, uh-huh. um, sausages cut up, you know, and they put it in the microwave. You know what I mean? So with these jalapenos, with these sausages, with this iced tea mix drink in there, 
they'll put it in there. And the, and they, and the, the instructions that they gave me was luck. Don't pull that shit out until you smell fucking carga. And what carga is, is heroin. They say, when you smell like a heroin smell, then that's ready. You know, so you put it in the microwave for, I mean, I would say a good five fucking 10 fucking minutes. Holy you know what I mean? Shit. Let that shit boil. And, and what it does is the jalapenos, the sausage, the iced tea, all this shit in there. It, it, it kind of like just fucking marinates. cooks and marinates together, you know, and then you pull it out and you and you put it oh first and then you get another bucket and you put the noodles in there, the dry noodles and you put it in there until they get a golden brown, you a know, golden brown. A golden brown. And then what you do once you get that, then you pull the fucking sauce into that fucking uh, bag of noodles because now it's in the bag and you put the fucking chicho on uh, the chicho. You put the uh, chicharrones. Yeah, chicharrones in there, you know, because, you know, you don't want them too soft. You want it still a little crispy. I mean, and you let that shit cook and that shit is so fucking bomb. And shit. You know, I love chicharrones. That's my shit. Yeah. So I might have to try that spread. I mean, it's bomb. I know I went long winded <laughs> on that shit right now. No, but you know, it's very interesting when you're when you're in prison and you're like, you have to make it work. It's interesting to me. You know, because I like again, I got my job. I get girls that are like, ah, oh, this this food is shit. This shit tastes nasty. It's like motherfucker. If you hungry, you hungry. You gonna fucking eat. I'm gonna tell you like this. Um, they so in L.A. County Jail. Last time I was there, they they started this thing called manwiches. You know, which is a new uh, invention in regards to using what you got to eat. You know what yeah. I mean? So the county jail would give you these pieces of bread when your sandwich, it would be in a sealed package. You know what I mean? And then you'd have your fucking whatever the fuck else you'd have, um, whatever they get with it. It was a bologna or whatever. But anyways, you'd fucking, uh, you'd, you'd get rid of that bologna, but sometimes you use the bologna, but what they would do is they would get the top ramen packages. They pour hot water in it and you got to let that fucking, and you don't put the noodle in there. I mean, you don't put the seasoning packet in there and you let it get almost to a, like a spongy filling. And then you dump that water out, you put it in a bread and then they would make these sauces. You sprinkle it with some of the seasoning of the, from the fucking uh, 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 top ramen seasoning packet. And then they would make, sometimes it would make like a fucking, uh, uh, some type of, um, a jelly thing. It was like a layer of a jelly thing. I forget how they made that shit. And then they put some beans on it. You know what I mean? And, and that shit was just so fucking Good. bomb. I mean, I guess it just depends on where you're at. Like a lot of cats, I put a post about having the fucking uh, uh, the spread challenge and shit. You know what I mean? Getting crowned on hoodstocks. And a lot of cats say, nah, dog, it ain't the same. The water ain't the same. You know what I mean? This, the ingredients are the same. Wait, but what me, you, wait, what do you mean the water's not the same? Because the water is dirty as fuck in there. And maybe it has something to do with the spreads. You know, I don't know if it tastes ah. good. I don't know. Maybe that's a seasoning because they say it doesn't taste the same as in the, when, in you're the, on the when you're on the fucking outs. But I, my thing is like, bro, you're just using different ingredients. I don't know if it's the fucking yeah. water. But at the same time, let me tell you this right now. When you guys order from prison, uh, what's the what's the main distributor from prison? I think it's called Keefe. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, check it out. You can go to Keefe right now, and you can order from the Keefe menu, which is the prison fucking water, which is the prison <laughs> menu. You know what I mean? Of dried beans, all the fucking <laughs> packages of beans and whatnot they give you. You know what I mean? If it's chili beans, if it's a packet of tuna, because now they don't give cans. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, and, and, you and, can use that as a shank. You can use it as a weapon. You know what I mean? B before they used to give you cans of shit, and you had yeah. this. Uh, you have this little can opener. It's called a P2B or something like that. You know what I mean? You open up these cans manually. It was like a camping military fucking uh, can, can opener, opener. And shit, but not too big that you couldn't fuck nobody <laughs> up with it, you know? But anyways, now they got the packets. They don't give those no more, you know? Yeah. I, you know, hey, you guys got me on this tangent right now. She got me on this right now. But, I love uh, it. I love to hear it. Yeah, but 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 so check it out. You can order the shit on Keefe. You want it to spread the taste the same? My homie, my homie Scraps, Ordered all that shit and threw a big ass fucking spread, you know. Dude, oh, tell him. So, how about you just apply the kefi? You're like, nah, I ain't got the money for all that. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm just saying though, like that. That's a way to uh, get to the, get the yeah. fucking water. So, yeah. what's the excuse now? Echo, Echo is worth talking about ranger pudding. I don't know, if, bro. What the the what? <laughs> what the fuck is ranger pudding? Ranger pudding. I, I need to know it's what a that is. It's a military thing for sure. You know what I mean? Uh, first time watching your podcast, loving it. Shout out to uh, Lisa Quinn. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate you. Much love. Appreciate it. A lot of chefs from around the world say the same water in American doesn't in America doesn't make the food taste the same. Okay. Yo, I want to know why the fuck every time I go to Mexico, I fucking get the shits. 
Because you're drinking that fucking water. Water. Right? <laughs> that what water. the fuck is in that water? I mean, it's a bunch that's, of... That's, that's the real question. I mean, their filtration system is probably how, horrible. How is that water in some spread? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to try it. I mean, I I, I, I get... Honestly, when I take... So I made my girl that so. fucking iced tea Chinese spread out here. <laughs> and I swear so to God... Yeah, what the my, fuck is my, this? My, no, my stomach wasn't ready for that shit because I fucking <laughs> shit it all over my fucking self. You know what I mean? Shut up. Talking... You know what? We're not going to get to the shitting yourself stories. <laughs> I mean, not shitting That's in my pants, but I couldn't stop fucking shitting, dude. I had the fucking runs, dude. It was fucking ridiculous. <laughs> the meat is different. Shout out to Mashika. I mean, he said the meat is different. The the spaghetti, uh, the spaghetti we we was the best. Oh, the spaghetti MRE was the best. Shout out to Fried Eggs Dirt. He always fucked with me and shit. You know what I mean? Fried Eggs. Um, uh, all in Mexico, it happens to me too when I go down there. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, I think they advise you don't drink the water. Like, what the fuck is wrong? Yeah, with I you? didn't know Why are you that. Drinking the water? I didn't know That's that. That's a known fact. I didn't know. How that. do you not know that? This is my first time. I was trying to fucking get lit at Rosarito. Okay, papas and beers, you know, and oh, it was just about a bad time. I bet you had a crazy night that night. It was, it was so fun. I, I you know what? We're not gonna go down. She That's, don't even want to tell that story. That's, I was like, fuck, we don't get into that time. But she's like, she's yeah, really gonna fuck me up. Yeah. Uh, don't <laughs> don't drink the dirty water. Yeah, like drink fuck. bottled water in Mexico. Yep. Uh, spaghetti, vegetable, crackers, and jalapeno cheese with the small thing of Tabasco. Spaghetti vegetable is that uh, fried uh, eggs dirt? That's my G right there. He always fucking with me. Like I said, um, is that an, an MRE, my G? Is that an MRE? Shout out to everybody fucking with us right now. What did Jeff say? I'll make it for you. Got to bring you the MREs I have for you. Yeah, no, he's. He, uh, I think it was one of my when it was what my birthday that? on my birthday, which was February twenty fifth. What's your sign? Uh, I'm Pisces. <laughs> what is what is I'm, I, I'm I'm shocked that we're vibing right now. I don't I can't stand Pisces. Why? What's wrong with them? And I'll tell you if it fits. <sighs> you know, but I think you're a different Pisces. When's your birthday? 25th. So you're more towards the end of the month. Yeah. <sighs> I feel like Pisces are not straightforward. Oh, I'm 100 percent straightforward. But it's because you're at, blunt, you're you're but you're, you're like at the end of the month. I'm no, I'm so blunt, dude, that people hate me for it since Same. I was like fucking See, like that's day where we get along, bro. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like people, people would just be like, fuck lucky. He's a fucking dick. Like there's females in my neighborhood, and, and there's a lot of dudes that got the fucking they had to get the motherfucking shit. You know what I mean? And they're like, fuck that dude. You know what I mean? They're like, I fucking hate that guy. Yeah, you know that. So I I so check it out. Being blunt it used to be my uh I was like, you know what? I'm just going to be the realest I can be. Like, even if they don't like it, fuck them, you know? And honestly, that's destroyed relationships than, uh, uh, like, made them good, right? Yeah. You know, like, fucking, that's, same, not, same. That's, that's not good. So I really, really, really try to stay away from that shit. Why? Because I'm so good at being an asshole. You know, it's because people feel threatened by that. I feel, I'm good at being an asshole. I swear to God. Just, Ask my girl right now. My girl will be like, he's a bring dick. Bring her in here. Bring her in here. Bring my girl in? <laughs> bring her in here. Yeah, I'll bring my girl in right now. Is she, he a dick? <laughs> what? No, let's do that. <laughs> I need to know. Give us your best story. <laughs> no, but yeah, the same though. I mean, I'm not proud about it, but she'll tell you the truth. But you know, you know, I feel like people- I mean, I try not- I really people, try to- But those are the best people because- I would. Rather, I mean, I would never I would bullshit you. Not you. To bullshit, exactly. Yeah, I never bullshit you. I would you. rather you be like. I'll never be like, bro. This was a dope ass exactly. podcast when it wasn't. You're like, I will never have you on my podcast again. Thank you for today, but you will never come again. Sorry, this was shit, and that's facts. But I wouldn't. I'm. I'm. I'm blunt to a point <laughs> at this point in my life, dude. At this point in my life, that I. I wouldn't. I, I mean, my objective is not to hurt. Uh, your feelings, you know, like, but I'll, I'll be honest with you. I mean, if I'll be like, hey, bro, that shit was dope. That was cool. Like, but, I really mean that, you but know, you but if I don't really say nothing and shit, you know what I mean? Then I'm just like, you know, but I'm like, I was like, all right, it was OK. It was whatever. But do you think sometimes you have to hurt people's feelings? Because honestly, I like for me, I love constructive criticism. I like, do too. I tell want, me, tell me what I'm fucking about. I yeah, got, I, got, I want you to tell me so that I can feel like shit. And then I can learn from the experience and then I can grow from it. Shout out to the first Pisces you, you vibe with. You know what hey. I mean? I mean, I don't know the sign shit, but I, I hear that it, uh, a lot of it is accurate. Yeah. Ac I very think, accurate. I think you're a water sign, if I'm not mistaken. I'm, yeah, I'm a fucking fish. And I'm fire. 
Okay. I'm a fireside. Now put your ass out, girl. <laughs> Straight up. Nah. Easy nah, money. Nah, 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 nah. Put her ass out. <laughs> Play with it. So I so so I'm a very uh, dominant uh, type of male. Like I, uh, I I I I I work better with myself than others, so, so to speak. So you're like antisocial. I'm not antisocial, but I know a hundred motherfuckers, but the circle is very small. Same. I feel like you have to have your you have to have your circle small because you just can't fuck with everybody. Because I feel like I, at least from my experience, I feel like I I've always been the type of person. For a long time in my life, including my ex, like, I always put other, like, I'm a fucking giver. I don't know if you can catch that vibe, but <laughs> I'm such a fucking giver. Like, I'm the type of person, you know, in my car right now, if you come out to my glove department, glove compartment, I have single dollar bills, fives, and change. Because every time I see homeless people, I always like to give them money. Now, if you're going to fucking buy dope with that shit, that's your business. If you're going to go fucking buy a cheeseburger because you're fucking hungry, that's your shit. All I know is that I contribute to you to try to fucking give you malnutrition, right? Yeah. Um, and I just feel like I always get fucked over. So I feel like as an Aries, as a fire sign, I'm, I've always been hot tempered. And I feel like as I've gotten older, I've learned how to like craft that and i've learned to know when the fuck when to pop off and when not the fuck to pop off because for a long time i would just pop 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 and it was just not doing anything for me but i feel like having a small circle you just you just do i feel like i was just doing so much for so many different people and i just wasn't getting anywhere in my life and i was just doing 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 and even for my ex like i was like paying the rent Paying the like elect- the electricity bill, paying for the food, paying for this, 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 because <laughs> Huh? What's wrong, babe? Almost done. Is mama here? Okay, close the door, babe. <laughs> you know, and like, cause I the I think my biggest downfall is I see the best in people. And like with my ex, like he's a great audio engineer. Like he's doing great right now. Yeah. You know, and like my thing was like, I see the potential with you. And I want you to use this extra room that we have to record artists and I'll pay the electricity bill and I'll work two jobs and you stay at the crib and you do this, this, and this because I want you to do better with yourself. 100%. But then that just fucked me over. Hey, shout out to Shooter. You know you in the circle, my G. Stop that shit. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and and that's why I go back to like having a small circle is, 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 is very like critical because people... I learned the hard way that people will just use the fuck at you until they can get what they want. And then once they're done, it's like a fucking leech. Yeah. Once they're done sucking all the blood, that you're just trash. 100%. It's crazy. You know, you know what? It took me a lot of years to realize I thought everybody else was the problem. And then I get to this age and I feel like, nah, they ain't the problem. I'm the motherfucking problem right here. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I've been the problem for a lot of years. I've been... I've been even it was detriment detriment to my fucking self and shit. You know what I mean? Like I have been the problem. Like I've had fallen. I've had. I mean, if you keep on having the same thing going on with different people and shit, there comes a point in time where you need to be like, you know what? It's not that person. It's me. It's me. And so I came to a point in my life where I was like, you know what? I need to fix some shit. So this time that I've been out the pen since the last. I have been in a constant motion of trying to repair myself because I realized I, you know, I mean, I wasn't the best person. I wasn't a good friend. I wasn't, yeah. I was a lot of, a lot of different things. And, and I, I just, I took a step back and out, I stepped out of my body and I looked at myself throughout the years. And, and when you see repetitive motion, you know what I mean? That aren't working out, you got to fucking correct shit. So I've been on some, I've been just trying to correct myself. I, I went to a protest the other day, right? With with a good homie, I saw of, that. with a good homie of mine. The last one I went to and shit. And um, there was a lot of cats out there that you know I had conversated with that knew me. I knew them, whatever, or they knew the podcast, whatnot. And we, you know, we had a couple conversations and shit. And my homie was like, "Bro, like, how come you?" Like I would have told him this, and I was like, "Nah, bro, that's not what it's about. It's not. It's not about." fucking uh biting back i didn't get nothing extremely disrespectful at all 
yeah. to me. You know what I mean? There was this one dude that said, yeah, bro, I seen that shit. I would have not been talking about that. You know what I mean? And instead of me barking back, like, what you mean, homie? Whoop, whoop, whoop. I said, well, bro, check it out. This is what it is. You yeah. know, Let, let's have a dialogue. Let's have a conversation. Let's, you know what I mean? And after I tell you what it is, if you want to push that any further, then bro, you know what I mean? I'll treat you like a motherfucking hood motherfucker. You know yeah. what I mean? And I'll come out my motherfucking pocket sideways. But it, you know what I mean? It, but it, that, and that's if they're not respect receptive towards what the fuck I'm telling them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not no punk shit. It's not no bitch shit. It's grown man shit having a conversation. You know what I mean? And not everybody is going to agree on something, but it just depends on how you disagree about this shit, you know? Exactly. And I get that. And I respect that because we are fucking individuals. Exactly. And the thing too, people don't understand is that you don't have to fight someone just because they don't have the same fucking opinion opinion with you. Like I can have an opinion. You can have an opinion. We can discuss each opinions and then you can educate me on maybe in an area that I'm not acknowledging and maybe an area that you're not acknowledging or you're not seeing. And we can have a healthy conversation and educate one another but then live our lives and agree to disagree. That doesn't mean that I'm like, fuck you, you're gonna fucking die because you don't have the same opinion as, as me. Like we're all human beings and we should all have different opinions. You know, there's so much shit that I've been learning in the last month that I'm like, yo, you know? And that's when people are like, are you a Republican or a Democrat? I feel like there is no perfect Republican. And there's no perfect Democrat. I think you can be a Republican with a lot of Democratic opinions. Yeah. And you can be a Democrat with a shitload of Republic opinions. There is no I'm this, I'm that. Because for myself. I mean, I mean, it's the it's the way of the it's the way life has been structured. You're either exactly. black, you're white, you're Mexican. You know but what the I mean? Who is, are you? What are yeah, you? you know but what there's mean? a whole lot of fucking gray. In this life, there's a whole lot of gray in politics. There's a whole lot of gray in prison reform. There's a whole lot of gray in the gang life. There's a whole lot of gray of gray in prostitution life. Yeah. In life, there's so much gray. And I mean, that's what people don't want to acknowledge is that things are not black and white. And they will never be black and white. So there's a system that people want to portray as like, this is black, this is white. It's, it's this or it's that. Yes, there's street values and obviously you know there's certain things that we go by and there's certain rules that you follow and if you don't then x y and z happen there's no gray in that you know but there's other areas where there's a whole lot of fucking gray and i feel like we're just getting to this point where you know and i and i support huh okay babe close the door my love Okay, I love you. Sorry <laughs> about so that. No, she's so cute. I, she doesn't ever do that. It's funny. It's <laughs> mean, my baby right there. I'm like, what? I got my babies right here. You know. You know, and um, I think I think this is just a very powerful time because we're bringing. I feel like as a population and as you know humans, we're becoming so woke to shit. Yeah, finally. This is a very. Who would have this, thought this 20, is, this, it took to yeah. get to 2020 about this shit? You but, know? you know, people are, are are catching on. People are catching on to police brutality. People are catching on to, you know, people that are being oppressed, black and brown lives. And I feel like we're getting to a point where we're understanding that we have the power. As humans, like, there's only, the what, 20? The protest is yeah, amazing. Yeah, like, Look what it's doing you right know, now. there was like 40,000 people in downtown LA. How many people are in the White House? Forty thousand versus twenty three. I'm just saying, like it's yeah, it's no, crazy. I hear, I hear no, you. it's no, I hear and, 100% and, and, what you're and saying. people don't understand that we as a we as a population have the power, and we as a popu like like why do you think the Constitution was built? You know, <laughs> like government wanted to just control so much, but they didn't want to control everything. I mean, look, look how the, and speaking of uh, governments controlling shit, look at Donald Trump right now. Let's speak on this real quick. Let me, let me, let me get, get, oh, get this I out right now. So, so, so Donald Trump was, you know, recently on the news about, you know, uh, this pandemic we're in, but now, and he was pushing it hard, you mm -hmm. know, at one point, and now that he's on his campaign trail, it's a shift. He, he has thrown that all out the window. And so this is a prime example 
about the way government tries to control us. You yeah. know? So, sh- so should we not be, this is the president of the United States. This is our so-called leader. Yeah. Should we, should, okay. So is, should we not worry about the coronavirus no more and show up to his fucking uh, uh, campaign yeah. fucking uh, rallies, you know, and, and, and not worry about a fucking mask. I mean, I mean, I mean, after his campaign, is he going to say, hey, wear a mask because I got mine in already? You know what I mean? I mean, it's like that two minute man we were talking about earlier. Right. You know, like, is he just sticking his dick in us, busting a nut and being like, all right, I'm good now. All right. You guys can fuck off and die now. You know, like, what the fuck is this? And, you know, and and this goes back to how simple my, you know, and this may sound fucked up, but as a world and as a population, we're so simple minded. If you think about it, most people are so fucked up in their own lives that they have to escape reality. They watch, you know, fucking reality TV, blah, 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 because you're so invested and you're so you dislike your own life. Right. So people care about drama. People care about fucking Kylie Jenner selling a fucking fit tea that we all know she's not drinking. But I'm a fucking drink in and act like I'm a fucking lose 30 pounds, right? There's this sense of 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 reality and not reality. And I feel like people don't know how to understand the differences between the two. You know, and then speaking of coronavirus, like even for my job, I'm really upset that July 1st they're taking away hazard pay. So I'm like, you're taking away hazard pay July 1st. So does does that you're basically since you're taking away hazard pay from us July 1st. That means July 1st, I'm not going to come to work wearing my fucking mask because what you're saying is there's no more coronavirus. So I don't have to wear this mask when I come to work. Right. But yet you still require me to wear the mask. And there are actually I don't know if you've seen the statistics, but yesterday, L.A. got four thousand four thousand five hundred and something new cases in a day. That's crazy. That's more than when. Back in March, when it was just like, you know, 600 a day, 700 a day. This is, and people don't think that there's going to be a second wave. There's going to be a second wave and it's going to be worse than the first wave. But with the political shit happening right now, people are going to sweep it under the rug, sweep it under the rug because they want you to vote, because they want you to do this, they want to do that. It's all about media coverage and just shifting the narrative. I want to know where the fuck the killer hornets went. Yeah, no. <laughs> Let's talk about that real quick. Let me ask her a question. Well, Gabriel, G- Gabriel Valle, I see you, my G. Um, appreciate you subscribing. Another way to support this podcast is there's a super chat right here. You know what I mean? If you go, guys go down, down to your screen, you see a money sign right there. That's a way that you can donate to this podcast as well. I mean, just to keep the lights on. Ain't nobody begging for nothing right here. You know what I mean? This ain't, this ain't a GoFundMe. You know what I mean? But if you like the fucking content and you want to drop a couple of dollars, even if it's a dollar and shit, you hit that super chat right there. You shoot, donate. And that just, like I said, it keeps the lights on and it keeps me upgrading. And it keeps me moving. And you know what I mean? In a cool direction, you know, yes. uh, like in easier directions, you know, a little more uh, having uh, this podcast funded. You know what I mean? Yep. So uh, I appreciate you guys. And I always get a lot of good donations. And I, I love you, motherfuckers. I appreciate that. You know, real shit. I just want to throw that out there real quick. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Support, support the business. Yeah, the, the support is the support is real. Uh, real shit. We need to support our Rasa 100%, my boy. You know what I mean? Mashika, uh, uh, um, Atlanta. I'm yeah. here. I'm, yeah, I mean, this is for us, bro. You know what I mean? Support this, the podcast. This is for, I mean, this is this is this podcast has been um uh, this podcast has been. Uh, one of my best accomplishes, and I have a lot of accomplishes, you know what I mean? And yeah. this podcast has been dope because it gives us a voice. It does. And I think I think people don't under, people underestimate the power of, of your tongue. Like you have so much power in your voice. And I feel like more people should and you know, and I and I can speak for myself, you know, I feel like, you know, I don't want to bring up certain shit because at the end of the day, like I have rent to pay, you know, I don't want to be homeless. So it puts me in, you know, a position where I I'm not as vocal as I want to be because I'm scared of being homeless. You know, I'm scared of not being able to pay my rent or my car payment or my insurance or being able to feed myself. And I got myself to a comfortable place. And even for myself right now, like I'm scared of, of, of being too vocal at work and saying my opinion 
and you know speaking certain things because uh like two weeks ago i got sent home for being too vocal i was i was sent home on a mental health leave you know and and i see how as a society we become shut down because you know i have a life you have a life you have kids you have other mouths to feed which influence how vocal you're going to be I mean, it controls my moves. 100%. You know, my, my babies control my moves and shit. You know what I mean? Like sometimes um, since I've I've been on this journey of this time around, um, I really like, like, how can I say it? You have a different I, mindset. I have a different mindset. What used to be uh, very, very uh, important to me is no longer that important. Um, but I still have my morals like as a gang member. I'm still from my hood. I'm not saying, hey, I used to be from here. Nah, I'm, yeah. from, I'm from Highland Park. Are you still you know? active or no? You know what I mean? Like if you run up on me and shit, I'll beat your motherfucking ass. That. <laughs> no, it's, and, but that's not, it's not, I'm not, I'm, I'm an active father. Yeah. You know, I'm an active father, but at the same time, like I'm from a, a generation where, you know what I mean? Like you either, you either swim or you fucking sink. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've always swum like sw- sw- Swam like a swam like a motherfucking big dog. You know what I mean? Like I tried to do my best. You know what I mean? I wasn't the craziest. I wasn't the hardest. You know what I mean? But I really tried to uphold uh, what we were representing to the fucking fullest. You know? But at this time and age, like if you come holler at me, like bro, like yeah, you see what I look like and shit. But you hollering at a daddy that fucking takes care of his babies, loves his babies, and I don't want to be nowhere else but with my babies. You know? And, And and but like. Like you, you, you reach that level of disrespect and shit, like hundred percent. You like, catch it, like we, yeah, we gonna catch every single side of that fade, you know. But, but that that's not my objective. That's yeah. not what that's not what I need in life because I've had enough of that in life. Yeah, you know? you're not we're, as hard we're, as we're, as hot headed yeah, as you were before. I, I, I mean, I, I've had enough of that in life. That you know, what I mean, like yeah, that shit is like it's the the background, it's the foundation. But really, dog, like, shit, homie, like, I got some other shit to do right now. You know, like, yeah. I got I to take care of my kids. I got to go to school. I got to educate my mind. I got to put this platform on for us. You know what I mean? I mean, if I was on drugs, I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to do this platform because I'd be doing some other shit, you know? Yeah. And so, like, uh, you know, good or bad and shit, I'm, I mean, I'm here for us. You know what I mean? I want to give us a voice and shit. I mean, I mean, I mean, so many stories that I've, I've, I've been went locked up doing time and shit. And some of the most interesting people I've ever met in my life were fucking in that cell with me, or they were on that fucking yard, or we were on that, we were shackled together on that fucking bus. Like these dudes fucking live some fucking crazy lives that 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 motherfuckers wouldn't even fucking imagine or fucking yeah. understand. Like yourself, definitely. Like yourself. How many females can say? They, they, you know, they've been through 30 plus foster homes, you know what I mean? They, all these placements, you know what I mean? The, the shit that was in your, on your mind at a young age as a little girl and shit, you know what I mean? Like they didn't have that pressure. No. Like, and it, and, it, and, it, and, you know, speaking of pressure, like it's a lot and, you know, and even sometimes I think back, you know, to myself, like mo- most recently, like I, my, one of my best, one of my really good friends, my best friends, Melanie, you know, she, I haven't really seen her that much, you know, because I'm, I'm living my life. She's living hers. And it's just, we have that friendship to where like, we can go, you know, months without talking, but you know, you know, that one friend where you don't really need to see them all the time. And when you're with them, it's like no distance has been there. And, yeah. You never skipped a day. Yeah. You never skipped a day. And, you know, and, I'll, and she really hit a chord with me because, you know, we were drinking whatever. And I had, um, you know, we were talking outside and she's like, yo, are you good? Like, what's good? And I was like, honestly, dude, I'm not like. I'm, I literally was like thinking about killing myself a couple months ago. Like, a couple months ago, huh? Yeah. Like, I, I, it was just really hitting me hard. Just life. And, and, you know, I, it goes back to like that victim mentality of like, why is life so hard? Like, why, why do I have to work and work and work just to, you know, be in a shitty ass apartment with my shitty ass car that keeps fucking up on me? And I'm, you know, I, I'm about to graduate and I'm I'm trying so fucking hard to make it in life. Right. Yeah. And I'm doing all the right things. I'm working. I'm going to school. I'm working multiple jobs and I'm trying so hard. But it ain't good enough. It's not good enough. And in, in, in this and, in you know, the impact that my mom put me in 
you know, sh- she gave this to me, you know, because my mom had a fucked up childhood. My mom was raped. You know, my mom had a lot of fucked up shit that has happened to her that she never dealt with, which then went into us, you know, and it's like, why me? Why fucking me? And, you know, and I'm talking to Melanie and, you know, she starts like she starts tearing up, you know, she starts crying and she's just like, yo, like, why didn't you fucking call me? Or why didn't like I'm your fucking friend? If you want to kill yourself, why didn't you fucking call me? And I'm just like, why do I need to call you and burden you? And she's like, why would you ever think that you're a fucking burden? Like, I'm over here thinking that you're doing great. And you were. And I'm your fucking friend. And I'm supposed to be here and I'm supposed to support you, whether you're high or you're fucking low. I never, you know, and and then I start crying because I'm just like, fuck, this bitch is crying to me. And I'm fucking, you know, crying because I'm seeing her crying. And I never, you know, because when you're when you're in a dark place and you're going through shit, the last thing you want to do is burn someone else with your depressing shit. Yeah. You know, and 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 that's why I feel like a lot of people commit suicide is because you're in such a dark place that you don't want to make someone else feel dark because as much as people say, like, I want to be there for you and I want to this and I want to that, like the energy and the vibes that you bring onto somebody else brings them down with you. Cause it's a lot, you know? And, and, you know, when she has a kid and it's like, I'm in this dark ass cloud and you have your daughter and you know, you, you just got a new place and you, you know, you're doing well with your man Am I going to bring my dark cloud to your fucking sunny days? No. Like I would, me being your friend would, I would rather keep it to myself as your friend because I don't want to rain on your parade. So when you were, when you were thinking about killing yourself, like how were you going to kill yourself? I mean, what was the thoughts going through your head? You know, I was just going through a lot. Like I just felt like, I mean, did you get to that point, that level? Because there's levels yeah. that you wanted to kill yourself. You know, I never. About it, there's actually like putting one foot in front of the other to the next. I mean, like, what, what was your level? Yeah. At, if you don't mind me asking. I mean, for me, I always thought about it. I've, you know, the night that I did think about, you know, this is the first time I'm talking about this, which I'm actually really shocked that I'm talking about this right now. But um, I was just in a really dark place and I was kind of just like, fuck it. Like, I'm just in a dream and I'm just going to drive on the freeway. And whatever happens, happens. And I was on the 91. Um, I had I was drinking with a couple of friends at the beach and I was pretty fucked up. Like, you know, when you're you know, when you're driving, you're like, fuck, I shouldn't fucking drive because I know I'm fucked up right now and I shouldn't be behind, behind the wheel, but I'm gonna fucking do it anyways. And you know how sometimes you have that moment where you're like, I'm gonna try to concentrate to get home. Yeah. I was like, fuck it, I'm not gonna concentrate. Whatever happens, happens. You just swerving all over the place. And I was on the 91, I was at um Seal Beach driving back home and so i'm not gonna say exactly where i live but i was passing downey avenue and this semi behind me just kept honking like crazy like honking 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 and i was just like why the fuck like you know and you're not really in your right mind when you're just going full throttle in your plan you're not like why am i driving this way you know, you don't think like that. I mean, you were at a point where you just give you just a don't give a fuck. So you're yeah. not like, you know, caring about how you think. And the semi just kept, you know, putting his high beams at me, you know, and it really distracted me. Cause I'm like, why the fuck are you putting your high beams? Like I'm fucked up and I'm trying to drive and like, I'm just going like, you know, 90, a hundred trying to fucking kill myself. And you keep fucking distracting me. Like, fuck, why are you distracting me? You know? And then I, I got so frustrated with him putting his high beams at me that I just pulled over and I just ended up going home. That was a sign from God, but at the same time too, I, I mean, I can't, I can't leave out the elephant in the fucking room and shit. Cause when I hear this shit, um, uh, you were so fucked up that you're willing to take someone else with you. Yeah. That's how fucked up you were. That's how, that's how depressed and just intoxicated you were. Because if you're going to go on the freeway and shit, you know what I mean? And you're just like at a point where you're like, fuck it. I don't give a fuck what happens and shit. You know, it possibly can uh, include other people and shit. Yeah. And, you know, and I think that was like another eye opening experience for me. And I've and, you know, I, I feel like it's crazy. But I feel like I'm a big, strong believer in everything happens for a reason. And I feel like that experience was something that I needed to go through. And I feel like I've 
I'm in a better place now and I have a more clear vision of like what I want to do and how I want to do it and how I want to get there. And, you know, those experiences helped me educate and counsel my girls, you know, and and when I work, I'm very straightforward, you know, and, you know, I talk to them and I'm like, yo, this is the real deal. And you're going to be fucking homeless. And like, I almost killed myself the other day. So what the fuck are you going to do? You know, and, you know, they look at me with like, oh, what do you mean, miss? You know, and I'm like, you think you calling me a bitch doesn't make me go home and feel bad? You think I want to come to work at seven o'clock in the morning and you're and it's seven a.m. and you're on some bullshit calling me a stupid ass bitch? You don't think that affects me? Like, understand that your words have power. What you say to somebody can affect them. And somebody that is not as strong as me can go home and kill themselves. And how would you how would you feel about that? You know, and people people say shit on social media. People say shit online. People say shit in person. People say shit out of hate and anger sometimes. And I used to be that person. When I'm angry, I used to make a motherfucker feel bad. And, you know, and I used to hit below the belt. You know, and as I went through treatment and went to therapy, I'm just like, whoa, how could I have, how could I have ever said that to somebody? Words, words fucking hurt. And people think words don't hurt, but they do. I mean, I've, I've, I've been, uh, I've been in situations where uh, I've had people tell me that like, bro, your fucking words cut, you know, like it's worse than being uh, uh, physically abused. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what people don't acknowledge sometimes is that sometimes I would rather, rather you beat the shit out of me than tell me you're a piece of shit. You're never going to be nothing. Yeah, because you already feel like that. Because you feel like that already. And yeah. the the longevity of you remembering that is so much longer than a wound. Like that that mental abuse is that shit cuts deep and people don't acknowledge that and that's why like i try every day to be a better person i try every day to be conscious of what i'm saying i try to clarify what i'm saying when i say things because i feel like sometimes people like misinterpret and i'm like yo that's not what i meant i just want to clarify this is what i meant and people are like oh shit i took it this way and i'm like yo that's not what i meant because i have been on that flip side you know my mom was my mom was treating me way better than my siblings but my mom did some fucked up shit to my siblings you know and to this day i feel like my sister is like mad fucked up for that shit you know and and that's something that i can never understand or relate to because it never happened to me i was emotionally abused in different ways yeah you know but being emotionally abused from your partner and being emotionally abused from your parent is two completely different things I mean, I, I would say the one piggybacks to the other, though. You know, it does. It's because it's like a reflection of something you've been through already, or if you haven't been through it, and say you you weren't uh, emotionally abused by your parents, and they were good parents, and then you get emotionally abused by a dude, then it's like a foreign object being thrown at you and being like, "Hey, I ain't used to this shit." And, and you, you don't know how to adjust with it. Yeah, you either fuck with it or you don't. You know? And then, and then you have to add the contributing fact, the contributing factor of like. You being emotionally abused by your significant other, whether it's a guy or a girl, because girls do it too, you know? If you're, like, in love with this person, (sighs) that's going to hurt different, you know? Because when you're in love with somebody, you just accept so much shit from that person, and you're just, like, love is blind, bro. Yeah, Love is blind, and you... When you're in love with somebody, you just accept some fucked up shit because you just love that person so much. You love that person so much sometimes that you feel like you will fucking die without them. And then once you get out of the relationship and you're like, yo, how did I ever think I was going to die if I wasn't with this person? And then, you know, when it's all a part of a, a part of growth. Experiences in life will teach you a lot of lessons. It's crazy. 100%. Hey, check it out. So we are at three hours and three minutes. Damn. I mean, time. It didn't even feel like that. Time has really flown. <laughs> like holy um, shit! Shout out to everybody that's tapped in right here. Oh my god, it's nice. Um, I want you to plug your platforms, whatever you have. 
Yes. You know, on the way out of here, let them know how to contact you in regards to if there's uh, females out there that are in abusive relationships. Uh, if you need some type of help in regards to the social work that you do, yeah, um, definitely. They, they can contact you. So go ahead and shoot that up. Yeah. So my Instagram is E E L L V V I I E E E. So it's LV. Basically, every syllable has double letters to them. And the last three letters is E E E. So again, E E L L V V I I E E E. Um, if you ever need someone to talk to, I'm always here. Day or night, I check my shit frequently. Um, I'm like an open book. So if you ever need anything to talk to, abusive relationships, I've gone through a lot of shit. So um, I feel like I'm always a, a shoulder to lean on 100%. for anybody. Hey, well, thank you so much for blessing this platform. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for get your last drink. In I know, quick. I'm like, get, ah. get that shit in. I mean, this time really flew three hours and uh, we're at. I feel uh, like we've been here for five minutes. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm uh, not going to lie though, I need to pee so bad. And thank God I have an amazing bladder because I've been holding it for the last two hours. Oh, my God. You know, I mean, we do pee breaks right here. So future reference. You know, I, mean, I know. I was like, I'm not going to leave. Hey, everybody give it up for Elvira uh, Laguna. Thank you. Thank you. Where's the restroom? I know. I was like, fuck. Yeah.